Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wild. Welcome to the Steve Dangle Podcast with Steve. Me. <laughs> not, told me not, to eat this. not finished his cookie yet. You bastard. And Jesse. What kind of cookie is that? Um, it's got like fruit and nuts in it. It's like one of those cookies that like it alludes to it being good for you, but it's fully not. Like it's just sugar, right? It's like a power cookie or a crush cookie. Yeah. 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 Hell, I don't know what you're saying. Matcha goddess cookie for sure. <laughs> it's good stuff. I like it a lot, my matcha goddess cookie. Uh, is that cookie for soft motherfuckers? Uh, no. It is. Oh, shit. <laughs> it is. Proud soft motherfucker. <laughs> I am a grown adult man. I think sweet things are delicious. Pumpkin spice lattes have now crossed over. Pumpkin spice lattes are the Timothy Lilligren of lattes, where they were overrated for so long that now they're underrated. Wow. Yeah. Wow. There it is. Now, now, you have a lot to say on pumpkin spice lattes. You also have to say a lot on uh, Nick Robertson's positioning. Uh, Jesse. Yes. Um, when you were watching Steve Dangle's Prospect Pyramid uh, uh, video, besides mm. the obvious fact that Steve does not use a ruler to draw his pyramids. No, I just um, draw things like a <laughs> kindergartner freehand. His, his pyramid had a bit of a wave to it, which I don't think the ancient Egyptians were going for that. But, you know. You know. No, no. Everybody knows that the actual pyramids are crooked. <laughs> Everybody yeah, knows not that. Mathematically perfect to within no. a couple millimeters. No, no, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, even three thousand years later, crazy. But Steve, Steve, <sighs> especially my favorite part was not even when it was the first time when he, when Nick Robertson led the Peterborough Peets. No. In in points, and the Peterborough Peets, by the way, Jesse are not very good. And Steve made mention of that, and he's like, "Wow." It's amazing. He led them in points as a defenseman. Crazy. And then he goes along to talk about how, well, oh, the Leafs don't have a lot of A-plus prospects. And he's right. They don't. But no. they do have their top nine after Marner resigns locked up for the next Ugh. two to three years. Mm -hmm. But you're going to need a little bit of defense, right, Jesse? Oh, yeah. But yeah. he sees three good prospects in that pyramid that could fill the defensive holes that the Leafs might have in the next three years in Lilligren, Sandin, and Nick Robertson of the Peterborough Peets, noted defensive guy. I'm sure Nikita Gusev could join him on that ah! as well. So as soon as that came out, how long did it take before somebody corrected you? <laughs> I think the video was posted at 2.30 in the morning, oh. and I found out I was wrong at about 2.31. Oh. It's, it's ever since I've been the Squidward meme where he just hands the guy a bat and please hit me in the head yes. as hard as I can. It's always good. When you spend all day on a video, literally all freaking day, only to find out that it's useless garbage and you suck and are worthless as a human being and God, I hate myself! Why did you think that left winger Nick Robertson was a defenseman? I don't know! Did and you... here's how stupid I am. Like, I have thought this ever since he was drafted. I don't know why. You thought he was a defenseman? Genuinely don't know why. And people were like, well, haven't you been watching... The rookie tournament, uh, and I haven't been watching it. I've been looking at the highlights, mm -hmm. and Nick Robertson's done really well, mm -hmm. and he scored a few goals. Mm -hmm. And while watching his highlights, I've actually thought to myself, "Wow, he jumps up in the rush a lot." Because <laughs> 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 I crazy. thought he was a defender. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, I'm just. I'm so stupid, and I'll never forgive myself. Well, you know, things happen. I mean, that's a bit of a thing. That's a pretty that's big, a big thing. thing. That's a big thing. But I also feel like sometimes you need a team of people around you to be like, hey, <sighs> let's go over this just for a second. <laughs> My channel's a just you. solo operation. Damn it. But the rest of it was interesting, especially this stuff on Justin Brazo, six foot six, who can actually skate. It's kind of nice. He's a grizzly bear who can skate, except he's not a Leaf prospect because he's not signed to a NHL contract, but he's been very good at the rookie tournament. That's an interesting one. Like, it's weird. I guess, well, I guess it's not that weird, but, like, there's players on the Leafs' rookie tournament roster mm -hmm. 
who are not only not signed to NHL contracts, but the Leafs don't even own their NHL rights. Yes. I think you should have to at least own the player's rights, like a, a junior player or something like then that. Then you would be playing for the team. It's like there's not enough guys to fill it out. Yeah, I guess. They need to have guys who aren't on the team. They have a player, Colt Conrad. Everyone's like, ah, oh, cool name. And I'm like, I've never heard of that player in my entire <laughs> life. I don't <laughs> I think he's just a invite or whatever. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Nick Robertson. Noted forward. Zach Rowinski, noted defenseman, has signed today five years, five years, three years, $5 million a year. Ha! Idiots! Now, now, Sorry. now there is something to the RFA thing, and I haven't quite got into this because it's still pretty fresh, but evidently a lot of his deal is backloaded. And I believe that has to do with arbitration, is it not? Yes. Uh, well, it was it was something about uh, his qualifying offer. Right. So We'll be higher. Qualifying offer, I, I can't remember. It's got to be at least that number plus whatever percentage. Uh, so his the final year of his contract, Zach Wierenski, will make $7 million. Like, actual dollars. Right. So his qualifying offer has to be, I think it's that plus a little bit. Right. Something along those lines. Which, I'd say for Zach Wierenski, now is about worth it. Uh, forget three years from now. So that's uh, part of the reason why he's doing that. It's it's the new reality for RFAs, as uh, James Myrtle pointed out. So four million in year one, four million in year two, and most notably seven million in year three. That's how it breaks down. What position is he? He is a defenseman. Good. And what's yeah. the cap hit? Five, Five million a year. Five million. Yeah. Yeah. So interestingly, of course, everybody goes back to how does this affect the Leafs? But because Bob McKenzie actually tweeted about how this affects Boston and Philadelphia. Other people with notable RFA defensemen. Now, they haven't had a lot of substantive talks. There have been stuff back and forth or whatever all summer. But it's been typical of all the RFAs where you don't really hear much because there hasn't been much. And according to Bob McKenzie, both of those guys are going to pick up in the next couple days. That's and Ivan Provorov and Charlie McAvoy. That's right. And Sorry, I didn't say the names. Um, so it'll be very interesting to see what those guys sign for. A lot of people are like, whoa, Wierenski is like, he's like, that's a huge discount. And Dom LeCision made a really good point, and, you know, he, he went out and he, he used a chart, but he used a chart that I could understand. Whoa. And, the, and this has been something that I think unless you were really following Columbus very closely, for a, a lot of people, if you're a Columbus Blue Jackets fan, you can't, you can't know how this is because you're a fan of Columbus. But when you follow Columbus from the outside, Zach Rowinski is the guy that was like, wow, he was surprise good in his first year. Nobody expected him to be that good. He was the other guy that Toronto might have taken over Marner. Right. And he was a defenseman that they kind of needed, except that he's awful on defense. Oh, is he? He's really bad on defense. Needs to get better in his own end. So Dom rightly pointed out that, yes, very, very good on offense. But this is sort of a prove it three years, right? you got to round out your game to get yourself to that elite level. And he can. Most defensemen, it takes, what do they say, 200 games to figure it out, really? Oh my god, at least. Like, to, to be truly an elite defenseman. So he's got all the skills, it's just a matter of, can he put it all together? And, you know, towards his system is, towards his system. It, I, I wonder if, I wonder if, I've always wondered if last year's Columbus Blue Jackets could have gone further underneath a different coach. I'm just not a torch That's guy. That's interesting. And I'll be, be flat out about that. I, I, I don't know that their system fit the players that they had. I think they just ran into the damn Boston Bruins. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> they also ran into the damn Tampa Bay Lightning. That's true. And they and and to s- ask any Columbus Blue Jackets fan, should they've been bounced as early as they were the last few years before that? I don't think so. No, it's God. Last year's playoffs, weird. They're just they're weird. Not a good indicator of who's the best. <laughs> like no, if, but, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Well, but the best Columbus team was, lost. Yeah. In the yeah. first round. <laughs> to Columbus. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. after, so, after the first two periods, they I lost think the they, I think they overachieved, wouldn't you say, if they beat the best team? The Blue Jackets? Last yeah. year, yeah, because they squeaked in. But the, right. in the previous two years, didn't they win the division? Uh, or the come Blue close Jackets? to it? Yeah. Uh, they, had, like, they, were, they were in there, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I look at the Blue Jackets and go, you know, at a, at, I had trouble believing in what Columbus was selling. I, I said that at the time. But if you look at how they did the previous two years... I mean, pretty strong teams and didn't really make much, didn't really cause a lot of damage. And complimenting uh, Dom Decision's point, uh, Rachel Dory tweeted this out, Mike Stevens tweeted this out. Um, 
what Wierenski signed with Columbus is what a bridge deal looks like. So what a bridge deal was. Uh, no, it's what it is. It's what it is. It's not. Because no, if, if Marner, for example... You can't example, compare Wierenski and want Marner. It's different. No, if Marner signs a three-year contract, let's say, at $9.5 million, that's just a contract. There's no bridge about it. So, so what says it has to be a bridge? I mean... Like the way it's that, gone. Again, as that's, I said, a great, that's a great question. Last episode, last episode, I said a couple things, and I want to drive this point home. Number one, we get hung up in the NHL on long-term deals, and I don't know why, because they can go south for both sides. The best of intentions, and we've seen eight-year deals go, seven-year deals, 13-year deals go south, right? Mm-hmm. Three-year deals are good for teams, by the way. You know that, right? And then, and then on the other side of it, so there are certain players that are going to be better than a bridge deal. And I'm not saying that Marner is, and I'm not saying he's got the negotiating tools to do it. But at a certain point, as the Toronto Maple Leafs, you've got to be pragmatic enough to go, you know what, I don't like this, but I also don't hate having Mitch Marner well, in my lineup. And, and, and so it comes down to, you want to fit Mitch Marner into a box that's, that's happened before. Right. And Mitch Marner's people are like, no, you're not going to fit us in that box. Maybe it just doesn't work that way Maybe anymore. it just... Uh, and maybe NHL general managers keep getting away with shit that never should have been a thing. How are bridge deals a thing? You, well, it's RFAs taking their agency <laughs> back. Right. Um, because, yeah, they've been screwed for a really long time. And I guess they're finally getting their vengeance. It's just at the worst possible time for the Leafs. I'm, I'm wondering if I should change my philosophy... On a Marner bridge deal, even if it's not at a very good bridge number, mm-hmm. um, like anything above eight, I think is probably too much if it's a bridge deal. But with Matthews, I've been saying, well, that sounds like a five years from now problem. Yeah. What about three? Sounds like a three years from now problem. Three's still kind of a long time. Yeah. Think of where the Leafs were three years ago. They hadn't, Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, we're had rookies. not played a game. Yeah. Had not yet played a game. We hadn't even seen take it to the four like Austin Matthews yet. I, you know, if they can sign him to three years and it's less than this 11 point stupid. 11.634? 635. Oh, that's it. That's, that's, yeah. yeah. 11.669. Is what he should ask for. And That's Myrtle a nice actually, number. he wrote that, and he did a, his in his mailbag today. He he wrote that Mitch Marner's ask. Hopefully, it comes in under eleven point six three four. So oh. he hinted that that was the ask around in there. Do you so. think that actually is? Are I they think so. that petty. I think so. Really? I think he wants as much oh, or near you Austin. Petty. Like, that is petty. Well, it, it, was, it was interesting because, obviously, the thing that took off this morning and, again, sent Darren Drager's name into the stratosphere on Twitter was the fact that on first up with uh, Landsberg and uh, Kliakovo, which, uh, you it's know, has him on building, all the time. It? No, it's not in this building. Oh, it's in Agent Court. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they, they said that, that or Dar- Drager goes on and says uh, that they, if, if things don't change soon, Mitch Marner is headed to Switzerland. <laughs> Home of Swiss Beats. Not really. Um, That'd be amazing. It would be great. But <laughs> <laughs> I spit a Z's boss. <laughs> Sorry. So, you know, and, and, and here's the thing. If somebody tweeted me, they're like, what are your thoughts on this? And I'm like, man, if he wants to make one-tenth of his NHL value on an eight-year contract playing in Switzerland, if he wants to make a million bucks, good. Go. Fill your boots. However, well, he if... Could, he could do that and get, like, a Quest Trade sponsorship. That's right. Yeah. yeah exactly. so. well, that's, like, that's the point, right? <laughs> Expedia. And, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, he could do, like, a Viking Cruises sort of right. thing because he's already in Europe. <laughs> so he could do, like, some sort of European travel deal. My point in this <laughs> is that at a certain point, we're just going to have to say that this is a personal negotiation. As in... It's not a if if Mitch Marner were to actually sign in Europe, which won't happen, by the way. But if he does, no, he's just then you know okay. officially that this that this negotiation has been personal from the beginning. Because if it wasn't personal, then he wouldn't need to go to to Europe. Trade him somewhere. You know what? Let's please everybody. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Listen. I don't know what Mitch wants because Mitch won't talk. Right. Right. Just like what Jesse was in the last show. I think right, Mitch right. is being told what he wants. Yeah, uh, but, uh, well, don't, don't. Th- there's that. 
But like ever since he was like a child, Mitch Marner has been playing against Connor McDavid, mm-hmm. and he's had to play in the shadow of Connor McDavid. And now he's finally playing for his boyhood team, and it's like he's playing in the shadow of someone else. Trade him somewhere where um, he's the tallest tree. If that's what he wants so bad, let's here. Let's, sounds great. Let's fulfill the the family's dream. Uh, where, where should he go? Where should you, you want to go to the Sens there, Mitch? You want to <laughs> no, go to the Sens? No, it's not. It's not about what? that. No, we're talking. <laughs> listen, we need to realistically talk about trade scenarios. Um, if that's what's going to happen, Brandstrom is what I want. Thank you. But oh, the, plus, yeah, of course, Brandstrom plus, yeah. But my my point in this is that if if a guy like Mitch is actually going to sign a contract in Switzerland. That means the negotiation was never about coming to a number. That means the negotiation was about making a point. And that's a really dangerous way to negotiate, especially when you don't have the cards. And, and I, think, I think that Dubas knows that. And I think that there is a, there's a game being played here, as, as we all know. But when you, if, you're, if you're literally threatening to go to some other team in Europe for a tenth of what they... Like, literally can pay you a tenth of what the yeah. Leafs can. Are you... Are you are you really just like are you does it need to be that personal? And here's the thing. The if Mitch Marners can't really believe that they've been slighted by the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, then wait till you find out what it's like when the fans feel slighted by you. Uh, we're there, it's too late. Because one thing in Toronto is that it's too we late. can build you up like they have, but they can tear you right down and it's run too you out of town. Yeah. It's, uh, oh yeah, and this is why people don't want to play in Toronto, said all the Habs fans and on Twitter. And why people don't want to play in New York, and who, people want, don't want to play in Chicago, and people don't, people don't want to play in Boston. Say, have, have players not been run out of those cities too? I just, I'm, I'm... Adam, you've been, I've only been in two relationships, ever. You, you know that moment where I've you're just... You. you. know that moment where you're just no longer in love? Yes. That's how I feel. With Mitch Martin. Whoa, come on! <laughs> Stop it! This is a rough patch, man. Can I? You know he's, well, oh. he's got to sleep on the couch. At okay. least. Let him sleep on All the right. couch, but you're not done I'll with him. I'll stay together for the kids for now, but he's got to sleep on the couch. Jesse. Can I give you a little bit of can I give you a history lesson, Stephen? Give us a history lesson. You go for it. I'll eat this cookie. I have here the uh the 2012 20 2011-2012 roster of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Oh. On it, they had James Harden, mm-hmm. Good they player. had Kevin Durant, mm-hmm. and they had Russell Westbrook. Between them, on this day in 2019, they have three MVP awards. Not bad. A couple of finals MVPs, a couple of finals uh, appearances, a couple of NBA championships. Now, they decided to trade away all three of those. Well, one left the free agency, two were traded away. I'm afraid if the Leafs just don't cave at some number to Mitch Marner, we look back on it and we say, hey, they had Marner, Matthews, Nylander, Tavares, Riley, Riley, Freddie Anderson at his peak, Anderson, and they didn't pay him the extra whatever Couple million, million dollar a year just to have this little run. And That's I don't want to look back and be an OKC Thunder fan. Thank you. And say we had three MVPs on our team and now are re- in a rebuild. I don't want that to happen. To yeah, least. and OKC ended up keeping the worst of the th- of the three main <laughs> they, guys. They made the worst decision. And the 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 um, point of contention with Harden was like nine million dollars. They had to go into luxury tax. It was nothing, and they just decided to not do it. And they traded him <laughs> the, away. The what? They the luxury tax. What is that? Can, sorry, I'm unfamiliar with what real leads no, do. But <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, but it was just a point of money. The Leafs here, it's same thing. It's just a little bit of money. No, it's fake money. It it's, is. It's an imaginary line that mm-hmm. the league is drawn in the sand that is screwing the Leafs and many other teams. Sure. Mm-hmm. But. And players. Mostly the players. And players. They can still sign whatever number and worry about it later. And have the guy I'm on just, the team. I'm just throwing it out there. Again, why not? Over, if you're going to overpay, you're going to overpay somebody. I would rather not overpay Nikita Zaitsev. I will l- gladly overpay Mitch Marner, Austin Matthews, so, and William Nylander. And Cody, by the way, what side and, you guys Co- on? and Cody Cece. And I would that's, not over- that's overpay what, Cody That's Cece. the thing that's happening right now. Nah, that no, contract. But that, this is the thing. <laughs> no, no, listen. Do I want Darren Ferris to win? No. I don't want Darren Ferris to win. Absolutely not. I want him to lose and get fired. Yeah, me too. But... <laughs> Hope he gets fired. I, and you know what? I don't Hope know. You're listening. I don't think the Leafs will actually <laughs> get do fired. This. Stop, <laughs> Stop ruining my hockey team. 
<laughs> FFS. No, I don't want him to get fired. I just want him to shut up and actually go to the bargaining table. Uh, like, do your job. Uh, but I think, I think ultimately, the what we have to, you have to not. <sighs> Hope Taylor Hall fires you. I think all of the prerequisite things that we take for granted that are unwritten. Every term that you've heard, a bridge deal, what a second contract should look like, RFA negotiate. It's it's it. This is you. You cannot tell me that this is not different. And I could be wrong, and Mitch Marner could sign for 15 million bucks over the next three years, and you guys can point it in my face forever. And you know what? I'll gladly take it, because that would be one hell of a cap number. But you and I both know that that's not what's going to happen. You know Mitch Marner is going to get an outrageous number. I said it last episode, and I will continue to say it. It's an outrageous number by any of these... You know, any of the mathematical conclusions that people have come to. And guess what? what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You think it's going to be okay yes. if Mitch Marner it's gets overpaid? It's not David Clarkson, guys. It's not Jason Blake. It's not Pavel Kubina. It's not Hal Gill. It's not Nikita Zaitsev. It's not Patrick freaking Marlowe. It's wait. none of those things. I can't wait for Marner to sign for $11 million and He's be, not a, sign and, for 11 and, and be million. a minus one in his first game. And just have literally everybody turn on him. It'll take two seconds. You think that'll so happen? how do you guys not think this will be a bigger uh, disaster than what happened with William Nylander last year? You think he's going to get Larry you, Murphy? You, 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 oh, my God. You you, you, adorable spring children. Like, just... Really? Uh, have you never what, cheered for the Toronto Maple What do you Maple think Leafs is going to happen with the Nothing Marriage good! Trump. Ever! That's what <laughs> I, thought, I think is see, going to happen. That's unreasonable. No, it is not! <laughs> Leaf fans will be have like... Have a century of... Almost knocked that over. I have a century yeah. of evidence suggests nothing good will happen. Who's San Pellegrino was that? Nothing good. This is mine from like two weeks ago. Oh, nice. And then I filled it with regular cool. water. Okay. I also have a San Pellegrino. That's yeah. Good. Wow, you I got the idea from Jesse. Cheers. I have a coffee from a place Cheers. called Hot Black. Yes. Hot Black Coffee. Who did Listen. You? We we paid them. <laughs> <laughs> We did. Yeah. <laughs> this is the worst sponsorship ever. I know. What the hell? We gotta, we gotta reverse this deal somehow. Yeah, no, no free advertising. What is this? I know, right? I know. And Sam Pellegrino while we're at it. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Man, well, and if you listen to this I wish I show, could just leave here and drive my BMW. If, uh, and you listen to this show. If you're listening, like, did yeah. it work? <laughs> no? Yeah. Did you send one? No, 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 no they didn't no. send one. It's not out there yet. <laughs> no, no and, and listen, if you listen to this show, you probably think I'm the worst negotiator ever. And you and you know what? You could be right. Maybe I could be making more in my own life. I think I've done pretty well with contracts. But I can tell you this. This is not a normal situation. This is not a normal market. This is not a normal player. And it doesn't mean that. And I'm going to I'm going to quote Bob, Bob McKenzie. Can I can we go into Bob McKenzie? What Bob McKenzie says? You know, listen, I can understand that you're writing off Darren Dreger. Bob's been around the block. Okay? So here's what he had to say. I keep hearing people say three-year bridge deal will work best for Mitch Marner in Toronto. Perhaps. What? Many throw out 9 or 10 million AAV, but critical question is what is the year three number if it's 12 or 13 million dollars as an actual dollars paid, not a cap hit. Right. Toronto has to qualify at that level, and he's one year from unrestricted free agency. Well, on a three-year at 9 AAV... A Marner Bridge with a $12 million qualifying offer in year four, it could actually be a four-year $39 million deal at 9.75 AAV. Or a on a three-year $10 million AAV, it could be a $13 million qualifying offer for year four. And it could actually be a four-year $43 million, 10.75. Either way, Mitch Marner is set up to walk in four years. The whole point of a bridge deal, from the club perspective anyway, is you are prepared to trade off risk of a player walking into UFA years in exchange for favor favorable, quote, relatively low AAV over the next three to four years. A relatively high uh, QO in year four, basically qualifying offer in year four, defeats the purpose of the bridge, which is sort of what Rinsky's deal does. Rinsky's deal is much more likely to be a catalyst for Charlie McAvoy and Ivan Provorov negotiations than it is for Marner or any other of the RFA forwards, but the three-year bridge structure could be critical uh, in any RFA negotiations. And what's interesting about that is that it it plays into this whole Toronto anxiety thing that I think Brian Burke kicked off so beautifully. Um, by the way, <laughs> Brian Burke, none of what Brian Burke has said, I don't know if you notice this, none of what he said has come true. 
<laughs> well, well, what did he say? And I would say that to Brian. What did he say before the half decade Matthews he, leaving? He said thing? that he said he would have traded Nylander. They're going to trade Nylander. Oh, yeah. He'll never. <laughs> and and then he said that he's overpaid. And like none of that, yeah. none of what none of what Brian Burke has said has been true. But it doesn't matter. You know why? What? Because once he said it, it's in the rear view, dude. Uh-huh. Now he gets to come. And I would say this to Brian. This is not an insult. In, in fact, remember when Brian Burke said that Nick Robertson's a defender? It's great. Moron. Brian Burke <laughs> is so good at stoking the anxiety. And it was funny watching the Aston Matthews quote about him leaving in five years. He's like, the deal hasn't even started yet. Matthew Guys, said that? Relax. Yeah. Yeah. He said, like, he's like, I was disappointed to see that. But it stokes that Steve Dangle, least fan anxiety in all of us. That and 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 this is and then and then Bob goes out here and and analytically because that's how Bob is comes out and says, well, you know, it would set him up to walk away and uh, in in UFA, yeah, guys, when yeah. they're UFAs, they can do whatever the fuck they want. That's Get how used to unrestricted that. free agency works. Yes, and you know it's funny, all everybody seems to apparently want to leave Toronto. I'm sorry, is this not an amazing place to play? It seems like everyone who's left Toronto over the past couple of years has done it because. Like, there They've was no more to. cap room. Gardner, yeah. it sounds like, would have stayed. JVR would have stayed, uh, by the sounds of it, or at least would have been open to it. Mm-hmm. Here, Tavares to took a team-friendly deal. Yes, he did. Also, I, shout out uh, Mike, Mike Zeisberger, who had the Matthews quote. It seemed like yes. the only one who had Big it. Z. Pretty cool. no, yeah. he was the best. He's the best. Yeah, the real Big dude. Z. Love yeah, Big Z. We got to have him on. I yeah. keep saying we're going to have him on, and then we don't. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh, you, know, you ever get in a mood where you... You only want to. You ever you ever get mad at someone for trying to make you laugh when you're in a bad mood? You're like, let me just have my bad mood. L- listen, I'm I'm enjoying my bad mood right now. I only want to listen to sad songs. Nah. Leafs Nation's like that right now. We only want to listen to sad songs, and we only want to. Uh, we want the new Marner negotiation shit. And a lot of you are screaming at this, going, "It's the whatever consecutive show that you're talking about this, and nothing's changed." I know, and here you are. <laughs> well, we're I know, to- and here you are. But wait, though, <laughs> there's another song, and it's a hit on another chart, but it's just it's in the wrong year. Have you heard this song? No, I haven't. It's heard a great song. song. What's it called? Uh, this song is called. Well, I got to give you the backstory oh, because okay. Okay. Uh, last year, a similar sounding song. Was the uh, what the hit of the summer? The song of the summer. What was the song of the summer last year? Last year? Yeah, not this year. Oh, I was gonna say Lil Nas X, but no. last year I'd have to look it up. I have to look it up. <laughs> I, I I was off the radio last year for the first time in a decade, so I don't know. The song of the summer last year, when it came to hockey, or at least when it came to the Leafs. William Nylander. No, that was the song of winter. Oh. Yeah, that was the, that was the, the song of ice and the fire. club banger. That was uh, that was "Get Busy" by Sean Paul. Okay, the uh, dance hall, but in the winter. Yes, it was the song of summer. Austin Matthews meeting with Mike Babcock in oh, Arizona. Right, and everyone lost their shit for several months. What if I told you <laughs> they met again this year? There was an article written about it three days ago, and no one... Th- today, on September 9th, they found out about it. What if I told you no one has talked about it at all? What if I told you there's an article in The Athletic written by Pierre Lebrun where, if you read between the lines, Mike Babcock all but anoints uh, Austin Matthews as the captain. What does he say? He, I don't have all the quotes right in front of okay, me. I'm going to pull it up. But it's basically, we met, we... Loved it, and it was spectacular. And it was all smiles the whole time. And Matthews wants to lead, and he wants to be a guy who helps his teammates. And this and that and the other. Babcock all but says, I love this man. Actually, what he said was, we did it real good. <laughs> we did it real Yeah, sorry. I, I translated it, but in Babcock's week, we did it real good. He said, I got out of Phoenix. I got out of Phoenix. No one knew where I came from. It was unbelievable. It was unbelievable how we got it done. It was great. We were laughing about it. Um, And Matthew said, it was nice to have that this year instead of the fiasco from the year before. Which, by the way, was reported by former Sportsnet guy John Shannon, who said it didn't go well. That's right. Now, now, 
Matthew said of, of Mike Babcock, he was great. A lot of positive stuff. We've made good progress, like anything. You're not, never going to completely agree on everything. I think we've had some good discussions on different topics. We went over some stuff that we both thought we should go over. It was all pretty positive. Babcock's enthusiasm exploded through the phone line Wednesday when asked about the meeting. Steve, here's what he said. Wow. Okay, you're going to podcast FR to this one, okay? Whoa, okay. All right, so <laughs> when I got together with him this summer, it was spectacular. And his confidence, and how he feels, and how important he wants to be, uh, uh, how important he wants to be on the team. Like you have to get yourself going first, then you can help others. And he's at the help others stage. Oh. And I think that helps your team win. Oh. I think it's real important. He feels good. Oh. He's got a swagger about him. Oh. He's got a confidence about him. Yeah. He's more relaxed and comfortable than I've ever seen him. Get relaxed and comfortable there, Austin. Oh baby, who's not fired up? Who's not? Wait, are you making this up? Is this a screenplay? Is this the cursed child? This is what I would tell you about Austin Matthews. He's as comfortable as he's ever been. What I mean is, oh. he knows he's a good player in the league. Oh. His contract is all good. Oh. His family situation is good. You bet. He's important on the team. So important. He knows it. He knows he it. He wants to be a driver. Driver. That, to me, is the biggest thing. He wants to be a driver. He wants to be the Crosby, Bergeron, Taze. These guys who drive their teams to win. All those guys won cups. And what are two or three of those three guys? Uh, Not Bruins. No. Captains. Hey! But those things didn't happen <laughs> overnight. You gotta earn the right, and I think he's done a real good job. He's gotten better every year. Real good job! That was published September 6th. It is September 9th. This is the first I've heard of it. Mm -hmm. It's about Mike Babcock meeting with Austin Matthews, just like he did last year, except this time it was good. Mm -hmm. Published by who? LeBron. By uh, some bum oh. you've never heard of named Pierre LeBron. Yeah. Uh -huh. In an, in an uh, outlet you've never heard of called The Athletic. Uh, can't talk about it. But my uh, station only want to listen to sad songs. Uh, my subscription just renewed. Did it? Yeah, yeah. Good for I you. Know, so, yeah. it's, and it was probably at your <laughs> when So it, you can find out about it. Uh, yeah. yeah. You can. I can't it. Read you got that. your discount code right when it came out, so you right? pay like, they pay you four <laughs> bucks a month for <laughs> you to read The do. Athletic. It's, yeah. Also, I did the most important work of the... Uh, of the podcast, and I looked at the 2018 songs of the summer, and my final decision is that "In My Feelings" was the song of oh, summer. Oh, without question, for 2018. Oh. yeah, with the challenge and everything, yes. yeah, yeah. So it was the "In My Feelings" challenge, which worked because <laughs> there was some feelings happening last there summer. There were some feelings. Now this summer, it was uh, "Old Town Road." Mm -hmm. Yes. So that doesn't really fit the narrative we're, we're going with here. But all the same, it's the same. To me, the Martyr Nylander stuff is all the same anxiety. It's the same thing. Feels the same. Smells the same. Looks the same. Yeah. Except. Like, it's even, they're even, the dads are even involved. Like, it's so, yep. to OT, the same freaking thing. And it's so funny because the reaction to Nylander was, yeah, that's pretty much what I expected from the pretty boy. Yeah. The reaction to Martyr is, oh, I'm so deeply wounded and disappointed. <laughs> yes! Yes, Adam! There it is! Oh, you... <laughs> Stick with my boy, this guy. <laughs> yeah, so, he nailed it. If it's so important, why aren't you? Why are you so afraid of overpaying him? I'm not done yet, Jesse. I'm not let him done. go. Listen, let, him go. let me go. Let me go. Adam, freaking nailed it. You tapped into it. I was talking to someone yesterday, and they're like, "Oh, they're not going to treat Marner the way they treated Nylander." I'm like, "What are you doing? Pay attention. Yes, they are." But then I was like, "Wait a second, no. It's like, it's like two popsicles that are and they're both popsicles but they're different flavors what what about what about the Nylander situation and the Marner situation taste different what is it whether it was xenophobia or Pritophobia. Be because he's hot or whatever it is people expected the Nylander situation to go the way it did and to them they were right when it went the way it did mm -hmm. with Marner they didn't want heartbroken. They didn't think Golden Boy would ever do this to them. Mm -hmm. As if he lived in this fantasy world that operates on a different currency other than money. Oh, Adam, you freaking nailed it. You nailed it. Why? That's what it is. They're disappointed. They're shocked. They didn't think this guy would give the Golden Boy his money then. No. <laughs> Golden Boy. See, that's the thing. Golden Boy. No. But, Jesse, now you're going to have to give everyone who asks you for money, money. 
No, but you just said this one means more. He's so special. No, everything. No, and, but that's he, not what no. I said. And he asked it's the emotional connection to Mitch Marner. Like, okay, let me throw this at you. The right. guy who dove in front of the shot in Game Three would never hold out on his team. Yeah, people didn't I was, want to believe that every it would do- Saturday night at first intermission for my entire life. I was told that the guy who would dive in front of a shot would not do this. Why is it not? And now then, he's doing it. Why? The guy who dive who dove in front of that shot deserves everything. Deserves no. the sun and the moon. Why is it not the other way? Because okay, if it's if it's one way, why isn't it the other one? Let's give everyone who blocked a shot eleven million dollars. <laughs> no, and the least but you no, do but he, not everybody, salary cap. Not everybody is Mitch Marner. Why not this one kid? Because not everybody else is Mitch Marner. He's, Mitch Marner is Mitch Marner. No, that is. Super de duper special money. He. What if he's super de duper special? Is that not what if, breaking your heart? So what much? if he's had one year of super de duper? Yeah, and, and he, it wasn't even super de duper. And he had one year of playing with a center who is legitimately super de duper, mm-hmm. Olympic caliber gold medal mm-hmm. winning. In a centerman. year where scoring went up. Yes, and league wide. But I mean, John Tavares has a history of elevating people's games. Like, like Kyle Ocpozo, his grandkids. Oh, John Tavares, Christmas presents forever. Matt Molson, Matt Molson. Josh Bailey, like, Anders Lee. It's crazy. Yep. It's crazy. And and it to and, and Islanders fans don't take it as an insult. He was great. Yeah, and I'm it's not just, ripping on any of those players, just, but they're just not as good not with him there. Yeah, they right. benefited from John Tavares. Right. So to 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 look at Mitch Marner, who was a sixty point guy until he played with John Tavares. By uh-huh. the way, Mitch Marner Mitch Marner was not playing with slouches. He was playing with JVR and Bozak. Well, at very least, JVR, you know, and, and a lot of those points. Are... not a slouch. He's a fifty-point centerman. He's not bad. Right, that's fair. The fact, the fact it of was the matter a, is, it was a frustrating line at times. But yes, yeah. of course it was because frust- Bozak and JVR are frustrating players sometimes. Love that Mark had Mar line. The point <laughs> is, the point is, Mitch Marner has a season with. John Tavares explodes, and that's great. And not everybody with John Tavares is going to score 94 points because none of the players on the Islanders we mentioned scored 94 points. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying. And I don't mind overpaying a little. If it's supposed sure. to be seven, I don't even mind it being nine. I don't care. But when we get into the 11 territory, yeah, no. Yeah, no, Take this a is seat. absurd. <laughs> Take like, a seat. <laughs> I understand. Listen. Bye, Mitch. <laughs> do, you, do you mind slightly overpaying them? No. Do you, do you think you should, if you're going to overpay anyone, it should be your stars? Yeah. You think we should give them $11.5 million? What? 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 No. That's not what I... No. No. But let's start listening to happy songs. Give it a shot. What happy songs? We, well, Babcock and, and Austin Matthews are getting along, which That's is great. That's the happiest song ever. That's Will, the happiest song we've heard in I don't even know how long. William Nylander is going to play with Austin Matthews right at a camp. Mm-hmm. We also know that John Tavares can play with anybody and make them good. So it doesn't really matter who's on his wing. They're probably going to score a lot of points. Kasperi oh. Kapanen, happy birthday. Yeah, I, yeah, right. Oh, my God. Yeah. He, I don't know if there's a Leaf luckier than him heading into this season. Because he's going to get a shot. I don't know where it's going to be. It could be on Tavares' right. It could be on Matthew's left. I don't know. I think either is an excellent situation for him. It's good. Could be on Tavares' left, really. I think he works better with Matthew. I think but. it'll be fun to watch. And, and, and also, no Zach Hyman to start, right? Uh-huh. Right. So Although, two, he was on the ice today. Yeah. And taking shots and two stuff. Two key wingers out to start the season. Janssen and Gavin are just got to, they've got to be thrilled. And so does Trevor Moore. So does, and hear me out, Jeremy Bracco. That is a very, I uh, was thinking about that during the prospect pyramid, and he was one of the prospects I didn't screw up uh, completely. Uh, he sure does provide what the least would lack uh, without Marner. Um, a super duper light version of that, but I mean, he would provide that. The, the, the criticism about Jeremy Bracco, because we started to overrate him, was that so many of his points came from the power play. And I'm like, well, the Leafs power play sucked last year. So is that necessarily a bad He's thing? He's a specialist on the power play. I don't hate that. Not you at bring, all. He's a depth guy five on five and he plays on the power play. Yeah. Totally cool. Put, yeah, you put him on. Like, literally, we have guys who play shorthanded who are fourth line guys. Why not have a fourth line guy who can also just be power play and feed and, and plays nine minutes a night? But he feeds beautiful passes and is a great setup guy. Yep. I don't see how that could be a wasted roster spot. I just don't. No. Nope. It could be amazing. And and so if, again, Jeremy Bracco is not a replacement for Mitch Marner. 
But you have one of the things in football that I really love to watch is is specifically I love watching the Patriots for this. They are brilliant at going out and finding the same guy over and over and over again. You've said this, yeah. Wes Welker is Julian Edelman. Is They've got two running backs who are the same guy who they just kind of do one-two punch things. Like, it's just, it's, it's funny because they have, Bill Belichick has this thing where he's like, I need these tools from this position. And hockey, we haven't got to that point yet because I think hockey's a little bit like, you know, football is like stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. And things are a little bit more fixed. And I get that there's a, a lot of a chaos element in hockey. But Mike Babcock really likes that role definition. Right. Except that Mike Babcock's role definition is about 20 years old. <laughs> a little mm-hmm. bit. Right? If, if there's an opening in his mind to grow that. And I think there is. I really do get the sense that there is, that he's open to it. You know what? I didn't want to listen to happy Mike Babcock songs. And then all of a sudden... I heard one. And I was like, whoa. Man, that's a banger. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't I listen to some more by this artist? <laughs> you know what? I was really... One on of the, the top t- five Spotify songs by this artist. Yeah. What I was I listening to? I was listening to the... Man, for the longest time, I was listening to the Fire Babcock playlist. Right. <laughs> and yeah. all of, I, took, I took one listen and I'm like, you know what? Babcock as a, a leaf statue candidate. All right, I'll, I'll listen to this playlist for a yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Why not? I'm into it. Why not? I'm into I need to listen to some new music. Sometimes, like the Backstreet Boys, you need to go away so people miss you, and then you come back, and you're more popular than ever. The Jonas Brothers. Jonas Brothers! Dude! Okay, so I had to go to the Jonas <laughs> Brothers in 2013, <laughs> and it was at a, a 15,000-seat amphitheater. Jesse and I just saw them at a 20,000-seat amphitheater mm-hmm. for two nights. Back to back. Scotiabank Arena. And they were in it. They were insane. Like, yeah. they were so good. It was crazy. And they're coming like, back in October. Yes. Or November, sorry. So three shows. Three, <laughs> three shows. shows. So sometimes you got to get away from the playlist for a bit, and then it's got to come back. And I like the Happy Mike Babcock song, because it's been about 18 months of the not good Mike Babcock song. Oh, you know? Yeah. It has. So I'm kind of liking this. What song is he singing when he plays Matthews for 12 minutes in Game 7? Who? Ooh. It's, We're not going back there, Jesse. I don't want to. Jesse, what song's coming on then? Jesse, you're... I'm not trying to listen to that song right now. No. Right. <laughs> I listened to it all spring long, and it was overplayed. Okay. <laughs> if now... he chooses to come out with another one, it's gonna be bad. Yeah. No. Wait, be listen. Bad. There's the the Marner deal is going to happen, and like I said, you're not gonna like it. And and people and and people are online probably are gonna tell you. We don't like it. This is how contracts work. But then work. here's the deal. Mitch is going to go out on the ice. And I hope he shows... Like, I hope it's done for training camp. Because if he's not there, I don't think his impact... Like, as we said last show, if he ha- if he plays a half season, or if he plays something akin to what Nylander does, and I don't even think they can do that. But if it goes, say, 13 games in the season, or whatever the, the number is, and he misses a couple, like a month and a half, or he misses four weeks, or whatever, the money that they pay him for the remainder of the season is a waste. Yeah. Because it is not peak Mitch Marner. Get ready for this one, though. What if he comes back and he is good and people go, why couldn't Nylander do this? Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know what the hell to tell you. Because oh, you know it's going to until December Go 1st. Go on. You know. <laughs> anyway. You know what's going to happen. Oh, no, 100%. But I think I think the thing is, is that, like, and I think the Leafs know that, they wasted the money they spent on William Nylander last year. I mean, basically. It was wasted money. Yeah. I know I know his underlying numbers were good. Dude, put the puck in the red thing with yeah. the mesh on it. Yeah. And and, and that's great. Trends are great, but results are also a thing. Let's not forget about results. Yeah. And and so, you know, that's why Tampa you Tampa should have won the cup last year. Yeah. Cool. They're and trending bet, they're trending that way. I bet their fans take a lot of uh, peace in that. Yeah, exactly. For sure. That they should have won. And that's the thing. You hang in there with the Tampa Bay Lightning because you know how skilled they are. You hang in there with William Nylander because you know how skilled he is. It's, it's the exact same thing for sure. But you do not want to have an RFA holdout that long ever again. Not that the Leafs could actually afford that at this point, but there is a there is some sort I'm really still foggy on the details. Like I really don't even know. Well, here's a detail. Did you know that Mitch Marner cost the Leafs Jake Gardner? That is an aggressively aggressive take. I don't think Jake Gardner was coming back, guys. And Mi- did not did did Chris Johnston and James Myrtle not come on this show and say he's not coming back? They did, and it hurt my feelings, and I didn't appreciate it. Like uh, JD Bunkus, I, people gave me a little bit of heat because I was like, dude, 
there's it's impossible that Mitch Marner is the reason this is happening. Yes, it is. Uh, and then I retweeted J.D. Bunkus, who had Jake Gardner on his show, and he's like, well, sounds to me that Mitch Marner was the reason. That, listen, that's just one guy's opinion. I was retweeting it because, I mean, straight from the horse's mouth, he actually interviewed uh, Jake Gardner. Um it's going to be weird seeing Jake Gardner in another uniform. Sure. It's going to be icky, and I'm not going to like it. And he's going to be playing with James Reimer, and I hate it. <laughs> right? Sucks. Good for Carolina. I'm glad something's finally gone right for you, you bunch of jerks. <laughs> another another uh, team-friendly deal. Oh, God. They really needed a, a defender, too. Just Boy. a really defensively inept team. You piece of garbage. Yeah. I I uh, I look at that and I go I don't think that that was going to be possible, dude. Four we knew years. the negotiation was going to go this long. Yeah, we knew that the Leafs were not going to commit four years to Jake Gardner. They said they'd go one to two. That's what we heard. And everyone the, and the Gardner team said no, and rightfully so. If they can get four, why wouldn't they? And so I, I look at this and go that was it's like it's losing money that you never had. Well, and and look at the cap hit that he signed for. He he didn't get a raise mm-hmm. in this world where it seems like everyone is able to ask for 9 or 10 million dollars. That leads me to believe 4 years was never there. No. Never no. ever there. But isn't it interesting at the beginning of last year we would have said, "Well, Jake Garner is probably a 7 million dollar defenseman." Yeah. Easily. Crazy I think the back that... screwed everything up. Cra- yeah. Yeah. So I think he just took the money that he could get and and is going to be great. Hopefully. And Hopefully everyone who put a screenshot of Cody Cece's cap it and then Jake Gardner's cap it. Different, and was like, man. It's, it's not It's not No, different. yeah, calm down. It's not the same thing at all. Different circumstances. If Cody Cece sucks, he's gone immediately. Right. No questions asked. No problem. If Jake Gardner sucks, they're he's stuck with him for almost half a decade. Mm-hmm. Uh, By the way, four years? Long fucking time. Yes. Guess Longer what? than three. Hey, guess what? Four years ago, <laughs> we were going into the season... With who is the starting goaltender? Oh, that's right. James uh, Reimer. And who and else? And it was so good. Who else? Who else was the Jonathan starting? Jonathan Bernier. That's right. <laughs> and who was the top line center that year, Steve? Oh, for the crying out loud, I think it was Kadri. Yeah. And who, <laughs> and who was behind him? Who was the, t- oh. who was the top scoring goal? Who was the top goal getter on the Leafs? P.A. Parento. With how 19. many? 19. That's right. That was four seasons ago, guys. Yeah. It's a long time. It's a long time. It's professional sports. This shit changes like that. Yeah. So I look at the Cody CC deal, and you got to relax here on this one. If, I, as I said at our live show, if he's five percent better, mm-hmm. then then Nikita Zaitsev, great. Uh, if he's not, then he's a a problem that is gone at the end of the season. The the big issue with the Leafs' defense is they had absolutely no depth. It it felt like or like line uh, pairings one through three. You know, mm-hmm. there just wasn't enough of a difference. But if Cody CC does work out with Riley, and I don't even think he needs to be that good, Muzzin Berry's great. Yeah. That's a really good second pairing. I mean, no disrespect I think to the Morgan Riley. Pairing. Yeah. I think yeah. they're the better pairing. No disrespect to Morgan Riley. I, I think it's kind of better. Don't you want Morgan Riley going up against team's second best defensive pairings? And he'll find his ice time on the power play? Yeah. Or, you know, he's gonna maybe get his points. Babcock likes his his situational switch ups too. Like if they're down a goal, I'm sure they go. Like if it's game seven, you're down, then you don't play your top line. Well, yeah, then yeah, he yeah. goes situational. He goes uh, Harper Hall. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He's never played <laughs> Justin Hall. But uh, <laughs> you know what I mean. Schmaltz. We were forgetting about Schmaltz too. He's big too. Jordan uh, Schmaltz. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think. I forgot about him until I watched your prospect video, actually. Dude, I did too. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say about, uh, did you say anything about SDA? Everybody's kind of down on him because he had a bad year. Yeah, so. Oh, um, man, imagine being 17. <laughs> uh, well. So, no, 19. No, a, no, he's 17. SDA? No, no, SDA. he's 19. Here, here's the, I have your answer. He's okay. 18. So, but He's turning 19 this year. He's about to turn 19. Thank so you. SDA was, <laughs> SDA was. The youngest player drafted in 2018. So right. he was 17 right up until the beginning of the junior high uh, season. And he's a, in like a month, he's going to be 19. Yeah, and he he's already played his draft plus one year, mm-hmm. and he's still not 19. But I demoted him a tier. Uh, I had him in tier three last year. I need to pump the brakes there. That was a little bit of SDA mania. I put him down to four because I just wanted him to take a step production-wise, and he didn't. 
He just didn't. Uh, even though he had amazing defender Nick Robertson uh, <laughs> playing behind him and feeding him the puck. Wow, Friggin' idiot. I'm never going to forgive myself for that. Um, like, SDA finished with one fewer point uh, than Liam Kirk, who was another undersized forward on the Peterborough Peets, who was drafted in the seventh round of the same year. Ooh. You know what I mean? Uh, like that's not good. So I and he's an incredibly skilled player. It's fun watching him. He played a little bit of pro last year with these guys, actually the Newfoundland Growlers. I this is a big year for SDA. He's got to take a huge step. Ideally, get traded out of Peterborough. They're a mess. Who's the number one prospect for this on upcoming? your pure event? Uh, it's a tie between Timothy Lilligren and Rasmus Sandin. They're both in tier two. Oh. That's how it works. Damn it. <laughs> That's how it works. If they need a right-hander, I'm Can sure they would call them. Can we confirm their defenseman? <laughs> <laughs> they are confirmed defensemen, friggin'. Have you watched any film to confirm this? Oh, man. I just, yeah, they jump up in the rush a lot. <laughs> That's crazy. Would you say they join the rush? They do, um, and speak Russian. Yeah, and... You know, I would love to see... Uh, you did say something interesting in the prospect video. No, I and didn't. And I think this I is actually one of the more intriguing storylines going in. I hate myself. Is, you know... I've heard that Rasmus Sandin is going to get the Travis Dermott treatment from not this past season, but the season before. Meaning uh, that he'll, they'll, yeah. they'll be like, yeah, the yeah, we're not going to play, you're not going to play, you're not going to play. Okay, January, you're playing forever. Mm. And I just don't think unlike, that's unlike Travis good. Dermott, um, he, you know, Travis Dermott had to jump in and actually be very good. The Leafs defense is deep enough now where if Sandin and Lilligren were to make that jump this year, you know, we might start. We might start the season with Harper. Uh-huh. We might start the season with Schmaltz. Might you know? We don't know. But, but they won't be there the whole time. The top four guys are Muzzin, Barry, Riley, and yes, Cody Cece. Yes. And so that Travis Dermott had to jump in, and it was like, okay, Travis, you are paired up with Roman Polak. Uh, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. You're, you're going to be moving the puck. Whereas, whereas with those guys. They can dominate the 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 the, the tough minutes, uh, the tough lines, and you can warm these players up and see what you have there. So you may be saying, what's the point of having Rasmus Sandin start the season if it's just going to be Travis Dermott taking his place? Well, I mean, he or... might. Maybe that's the best way to do it. Maybe you say because Travis Dermott is injured. Maybe you say because because Der- Sandin's a a lefty. So maybe you say, listen, we're going to try you for the first few games if if he earns it. And then you see what you have, and then you go, okay, so here's what we need you to do. Like, you, Let's say you play in five games in a row, and you go, all right, you're a very good player, and you're basically almost there. We're going to send you back, and here are the two, three things that you need to work on. And then next year at this time, you work on these things, you're on this team. And we want to get you back into the lineup, but right now we're full, and you can see that, right? Leaf's so that, that so I like. Weird. I like that sort of situation where you can... And, and sometimes I would argue even the best time to put a player in is sort of at the beginning when everybody's a little bit wonky. Like everybody's, it's still, the first five games of the NHL season are kind of fun because you're like, nobody is right. Nobody's in a no. rhythm. Yeah. Nobody's humming along. And if they are, you kind of expect them to crash midway through the season. Well, and like the players who are dominating the rookie tournament, like for all teams, are the guys who should. Yes. And if they're not, if they're not that's when you get concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I wasn't just, um I just look at it and I go Wasn't Marner like struggling throughout the rookie tournament or something and everyone's like, Oh my god. I don't he, think you can yeah. take anything away from those those no. tournaments. No, you I really think you look, you, you're looking at skill right. purely. You're not looking at how they played in that no. particular game. It's the and with all due respect to the fans in Newfoundland, like they're not doing a ton of evaluation at that game. <laughs> I don't think. Like it's it's an I know it's literally an exhibition game, but it is an exhibition yeah. game. Yeah. Like they're they're, ex- they're exhibiting. And they're throwing they're, guys a bone. And they're also throwing guys... Well, no, they're throwing guys a bone who might be growlers. Who right. might be Marlies. <laughs> well, and Marlies and... Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, it's not... It doesn't necessarily mean the Leafs. But my my point in all this it's is... It's not until game three, really. There's some real opportunity for 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 those two guys specifically, Sandin and Lilligren this year, to jump in eventually. I wonder if Sandin's an, an early guy and I wonder if Lilligren's a late guy. Because Lilligren's had what that extra year of seasoning. It's clear they want them to play together because they keep playing them together. It'd be nice. <laughs> it would be very, very interesting if at the end of the season, how do you like this? You've got seven defensemen, and their names are Barry, Muzzin, CeCe, Riley, Lilligren, Dermott, and Sandin. 
Do you I hate that? Are you, sending, are you sending down Harper and Schmaltz and Mernson well, they, and all? They're, they're sent down, they're, they're, they're uh, taxi squad, or whatever you want. Like, I don't know how many people would have to be on the roster. 23, I think right? Th- this year, yeah. I, f- I feel like last year they spent most of the year with three spares and two were D and one was a forward. I think they should do the inverse of that this year. You should have one spare D and you call one up if you have to, if there's an mm. injury or whatever. And uh, you have two spare forwards. They have way too many forwards. The Leafs are going to lose, like, I think, at least two guys to waivers just because they have... Dude, they signed seven guys in one day, <laughs> all of whom could potentially play NHL games this or year. Could be, and that's or not they could even, be in the Swiss League by, by October. Or they could be in the Swiss League, and like it's not even counting... Actually in the Swiss League, though. Act- yes, literally. <laughs> it, and it's not even including guys like Mason Marchment mm-hmm. and Pierre Engvall, who like have legitimate shots of graduation mm-hmm. at some point. I don't know, it's very interesting. I don't know... I, I, the one thing the prospect pyramid did for me, besides destroy my confidence, is uh, got me really fired up for this season. I'm interested to see what the hell they do. But I feel like most years you're like, okay, it's down to one spot. Mm-hmm. This year, because of injuries, because of turnover, I don't know what the hell this team's going to look like at all. Yeah, and I think what you see on opening night is going to be a lot different than what you get at the end of the season. Way different. Like I, you're talking about potentially five or six spots changing, right? Because you got to think, you're starting the season bare minimum without Hyman and Dermott. And if Marner doesn't sign, then that's three. And then you have to look at the defense. There's two spots there. The bottom, the five and the six, I think those change throughout the season. They're going to be playing around with that until they figure it out. And I think they're Sandin and Lilligren. They're hoping those guys, I'm not saying that they will, and I'm not saying that they're, I think they're hoping and praying that those guys come to camp fired up and ready to go and go and earn those spots eventually, whether or not it's right away or halfway through the season. If you're Lilligren, why not you? Well, yeah. Like, why not like you he is, to he, start the season? He's going to walk in being the third most skilled right-handed defenseman in the Leafs have in the organization. Maybe Probably second. second. Yeah. Uh, maybe second. Maybe second. Like, it, like, I don't know. I couldn't compare him and Cody Cece, but I think the only edge that Cece would have is the experience that Mike Babcock values so much. And I want to say, uh, Marley's fans correct me on this one, but I want to say Lilligren had like a bunch of his power play time taken away last year, mm-hmm. sort of. Like, I guess they already saw that out of him. Uh, so, like, that's not something he necessarily relies on too heavily. Like, that should be the goal. That should be the goal. I, I Regardless of who you think is better, Sandin Lilligren, Lilligren has the better shot to make this team out of camp. Easily. Easily. Man, it's interesting. Is um, Mitch Marner's contract situation enough of enough water to extinguish the fire Ooh. that you had after doing the prospect pyramid? Well, at you some said you're point, fired up for the season. Does Mitch Marner knock that down? My coffee hadn't kicked in. I was, <laughs> I was grumpy at the beginning of the show. <laughs> you know why? Does, does Steve told you why he's grumpy, Jesse? No, tell okay. me. Okay. Well, Steve, you want to? You want to? We were driving down oh, University God. Avenue here in Toronto. Oh, in my in my <laughs> Honda Ridge line, which of course <laughs> Steve says still smells new, which is good. It's got a new car smell and, and uh, not baby and, and dog you smell. Tell, do you want to tell me why you're such in it, like in a deep, dark zone? Well, I have what um, Molly Weasley would refer to as a case of the sullens, or fits of the sullens. Um, yeah, it's not because, listen, I am very upset about my mistake in the Prospect Pyramid video. Mm-hmm. I get one of those a year. It's the unofficial kickoff of the season for me, and I fucked it up. So I'm very upset about that. I went to bed late. I got up late. Sucked. Um, but I've sort of been, like, depressed over the past week. Mm-hmm. And it's because I've been playing Red Dead Redemption 2, and it's a really immersive game and I'm at an extremely depressing part of the game. And I play the game more and more to get out of the depressing part of the game. But it just keeps getting more depressing. So now, like, my mission tonight is to go home and dummy that game. So you can get through it. So I can get through it. Like, please tell me there's salvation for Arthur Morgan, damn it. I I just feel terrible for him, Adam. I feel terrible for Mr. Morgan. There you go. Now, so that that's got that's, you. In the I'm run. depressed because of Arthur Morgan. Well, on uh, on this Friday, NHL 20 comes out, so you switch to that. 
Yeah, did you see the uh, the screen grabs today of Phil Kessel retiring and somebody hiring Phil Kessel as their head coach? <laughs> what? Yeah, He's so, in so franchise mode. This year they have actual head coaches that you can hire and fire, like the old Madden games. So now when a player retires, they fall into the coach's pool. Really? So yeah, yeah, that's Phil pretty cool. Phil Kessel as the coach. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Right? Because they could have they could have had this hire, fire, whatever thing. The fact that they add former players to the pool. hmm as it goes on, and not random computer-generated names. Yeah, I love that. That's good. It's, it's fantastic. Maybe I go back to franchise mode this year. I think I'm going to do it. I've only been be a pro for the longest time. I hate be a pro. It's so it's so lonely. It is lonely. I wish there was more <laughs> communication in be a pro. Like I remember in other games, there was MLB games that I would play. But like, okay, the coach sits you down and like, listen, we want you to work on this or whatever. And I know, I know that there's like you know there's a little bit more investment in some of those games because yeah. they sell better. Yeah. But um, but I do find be a pro like it's like you sit off like when you go off mm-hmm. and whatever and you obviously are gonna skip. I don't want to watch everybody else play while I'm playing. I don't have time for that shit. Yeah, like, no, it's boring. But um, it is... well, and there was a glitch a few years ago where if you don't ask to get on the ice, you just won't. <laughs> <laughs> Friggin, remember that? I, 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 I sat that. there waiting for my next shift, <laughs> and after like ten minutes, I'm like, I don't think I'm getting back on unless I ask. <laughs> and then there was a glitch. I think it was fifteen where you couldn't skip ahead in your shift, so you had to. Oh, watch they didn't have fast forward mode. Oh gosh, <laughs> that was unbelievable. <laughs> Did they fix that, by the way? Yes. Okay. Uh, Can you? <laughs> how do you even release the game? That was. That's uh, maybe well, the worst mistake NHL's well, ever made. Well, right now, that was that's horrible. not that bad. That's not horrible. that bad. I don't know how much you guys follow it, it the... It yard uh, sales an entire game mode. You can't use it. I don't know how much you guys follow the NBA 2K game, but oh, there's a no. movement right now. It's really bad. <laughs> it's like hashtag fix NBA 2K Ooh. because the glitches have been just terrible. I was trying to pull up the, uh, the Twitter. The Zion Williamson field. one is great. <laughs> where he, he hits the ball stolen from him and then the ball goes out and then in and then back into his hands. <laughs> what? And there's yeah. like blatant travels because like you can do a, um, oh, yeah, you can do a jump step <laughs> but then if you if you catch a ball and then you do a jump step and then you do your pivot fit, foot the game doesn't recognize that you can't just put the ball down and start dribbling again yeah. so you, but then you do it and it's not a travel <laughs> so the guy's just traveling all, all around everywhere. It's like, really And funny. then you'll be playing the my career mode and you'll be uh, maxing out like your different attributes and everything and then you'll do like an hour of training and then you'll get like zero experience points. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Yo, I Wait, would, like an actual break. hour? Yes. Yeah, yeah like yeah. an actual of your time. <laughs> I would break my controller right? in half. Like that would be the end. And then uh, now online's having a whole bunch of problems because games are like dropping uh, with like se- five minutes to play. Like your game will drop and if your your connection drops you get a loss. So oh, it's not oh even like God. it's not even like an NDA or whatever. It'll be like did not finish. You just get a loss. But it's okay because they're probably <laughs> gonna release a patch for that. Okay. No, I bought the game. Yeah. <laughs> Am I? Why, why do I sound like an old man going? I paid for the game. Give it to me. <laughs> Everything you give me after that is a. Update, thank you very much well, for that. And but this is, I bought this game. Well, we're talking about it on this show, and we have to go to a call here in a second. But I just oh, want to yeah. quickly mention oh, something. Yeah. TJ, who we work with on uh, on Virgin, I think it was him that, that came up with this. He said, why do they have to release a new game every year? He said, what I don't understand is why you don't release a game, and then people pay for the patches, or you buy a season pass, which matches how much it would cost for two years' worth of one game. Mm-hmm. And or you know or or it's like you you buy the roster update or whatever you can make it either you can make it either like a la carte or you can make it you bought the season pass so you get everything. Well, eighty and, bucks for NHL every year is insane. Well, why wouldn't you pay? Why, why couldn't they come out and say it's one hundred and sixty bucks? However, it's the full two years, and then two years from now when we when we actually have some really cool updates to show you, we can give you that. You know what I mean? Like the game could take a genuine step forward, and, and this isn't just the NHL; it's all games. You could take, you could have these games go. All right, we got the team that's going to work on the patches for this, for this, and the roster updates or whatever. But this is what the game is. Then for two years, another game's in development and ready to release. Two years later, that it's like, whoa! And I would pay for that. I want to pay for a new game, but the thing is, is that every time with with NHL and with FIFA. 
there's not a whole lot of change year to year. Over maybe five years there is. Yeah. But it's little tweaks here and there. And that's not enough to get me to buy it. But if you could go, guys, we heard you the last two years on this game. Here's the holes in our product. Boom, we fixed them. What do you think of this? And the problem with the NHL, uh, the NHL games is every year, in order to justify the eighty dollars you're spending, they add another game mode. And I always go, oh, this is a cool mode. Like ones, or threes was a really cool mode. Then they added ones, and I go, that's cool, and that's cool. But all the glitches stayed. Yeah. Like th- they stop adding game modes and improve them. But like I wouldn't, most people wouldn't pay eighty bucks. For, oh, we improved all the game modes. So I think you're right, though. Like, yeah, just have patches for as long as it takes. Keep updating the roster. This is the game for the next 24 months. And after that, we're going to come out with something. We're going to hit you hard with some new graphics, new modes, updates that are like, like, you know, you know that people are like, well, like we were talking about player mode, right? So it's like, it's lonely. Well, how do we make it less lonely? So you sit down in a boardroom and you got a few months to say, here are the ways we think we can make it less lonely. There you go. Uh, or communicate, or yeah. uh, it's a little bit like Red Dead, where you can, there's multiple buttons for it. You can call for a pass. You can mm-hmm. chirp someone. You yeah. Can, yeah, imagine or, you added a shit-talking mode to NHL. That'd be awesome. You know what would be really cool? If you could do be a player with your friends, and you get drafted into into a league, mm. maybe you get, or maybe you start on a junior team together, you play that season, and then you get drafted, and you're all on separate teams, but you have to, like, go to this state. Okay, so oh, this... So it's not ECHL. You're talking... You're talking you're, you're in the be-a-player mode, but franchise together. mode, except you guys are all be-a-player. Yeah, or yeah. you compete with each other at franchise mode. They have that. They, they have a version of that. Can it's, we do that? It's it's what, not... Like hut? Yeah, it's kind of no, like Hut's hut, not but like hut, that, though. Hut's, hut's like the, the dumb cards and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't yeah. want that. I want well. The, that's how they make a lot of money. Sure, is right. the micro kids in tier ten totally. get to kill you with yeah, yeah. some <laughs> team with like Pavel Bure and Pavel Datsuk on it, and when my, you got Ryan Reeves on your top line. My, my, they uh, speaking uh, from experience. My brother, <laughs> yeah. My brother in law is the father of three, and then he's got his his wife has two from another marriage. Just five kids. Yeah. So his only saving grace in life is playing FIFA, uh-huh. and. He was like, let me show you. He's like, I'm really, really good. And he was talking about it. And he's like, he's tier two or tier three or something. It's like really you know hard to get to. fucking hard? I, yeah. So oh then he's like, so he goes into this FIFA game. And he's like, oh, this guy's lineup sucks. Like, I'm going to kill him. And then all of a sudden, he sees one card. And it's a Pele gold card. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. And every time Pele touched the ball, boom, in the net. Like, Wait, that's just the other guy. Yeah, yeah. That's like, <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> it's not fair. It's like, not, it's not, so, you're not, oh, even, yeah. It's not it. reality. <laughs> like, give, it doesn't this, make you good. Yeah. But this guy is in, like, my, my, my brother-in-law, God bless him, is spending hours. He's, he's literally mining cards. That's not what he enjoying does. himself at all. No. He doesn't get to at play. All. He just mines cards. And then a 14-year-old pulls a Pele yeah, gold yeah. card because <laughs> he paid $20 with his parents' credit card and just... You're yeah. screwed for life. Oh, hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Whatever. A hundred dollars <laughs> for sure. a not Look real it player. Look it, Look it up. There is like it's expensive because FIFA is a whole new level, right? Like it's that's worldwide. It's insane. And so it's and he was he was like showing me this and he's like, you know, you and Steve should be doing more of this stuff. And I'm like, you're absolutely right. We should be. He's like because we got it and I want to. I've he's been like, talking to people about streaming, but he's man. like, lit- no, he's like, literally, you don't even need to stream. He's like, just talk about the cards and people like he's like, it would be great to have someone interesting talking about the cards. And I'm like, man, Steve would be perfect for that. Uh, I could. Yeah, I could talk about the cards. Like, I would love to tag team with someone Let's where I talk about the cards and someone else plays. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we just be awful and talk about the, the other day? Let's do that. Yeah, fine. The other day I sat there and watched. It was Let's, like, get, let's get a Bauer deal like Nasher. It yeah. was, <laughs> holy shit. It was like a 17 minute video. Video of Nasher playing the new battle royale mode. He's so good in He's NHL insane. 20. And I just sat there and watched it for 20 minutes. And just talking just... shit the whole time. You yeah. see his little clip he uploaded he... where you ew. It was his first Ew. time playing the Ew. mode, and he went undefeated throughout, and he won the whole tournament. And he and got it, the. And he's good at he real got the hockey. jersey. Yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. He's he's awesome though, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, wicked he's great. fun. Um, okay, we got to make a call now. One of the things this is a hot button issue, and we talked about it in the last show. Um, and and quite frankly, with most people, they have the same questions that I did. But I got lit up online by several people who were super pissed off that I dared to ask some questions about the. Uh, NWHL and the PWHA. And to catch you up in case you have been a little out of it this summer as I have, 
because quite frankly, hockey was not my focus this summer. Um, how's, it, how's basically, it yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So the the NWHA, uh, or sorry, the NWHL has a league. There's a lot of letters coming up. Yeah, they are the professional women's hockey league that exists today. They have a 50-50 revenue split with the players, and there are 150-plus players that are saying, we're not going to play with that, although some have crossed the picket line. They have formed the PWHA. That's the Professional Women's Hockey Association. Like, well, yeah. yeah, because they're they're starting... Essentially, it's a union of people, whether or not it's a registered union or not, and I don't know that for sure. The point here is that they're saying, we are not going to play until there's a more sustainable model. Now, the issue here cool. is that is that they are pulling themselves out of professional women's hockey because they think it should be, from what I understand, a lot more like what the WNBA has with the NBA, where it's an NBA, WNBA thing that the NBA created, that they fund, and that... Well, this is our theory. That's the theory. With it, yeah. They ha Now, it's this interesting... Is, and it's... We're not the only ones who have this theory. Yeah, it's confusing. Yes. This whole thing is confusing. So, um... We're going to try to cover off all the angles as we go. And I understand that the phone call we're about to have is going to piss some people off. But I really don't care because I don't think people understand that there is a NWHLPA. Yes. And legitimately, I did not understand. I right. did not know that. So we're going to bring on Anya Packer, who yes. is the head. And we're going to get her, her thoughts on the Twitch deal, which some people have called groundbreaking. Other people have called a joke. And we're going to get her thoughts on what's happening with the PWHA, who did not include certain players from the NWHA. God, there's so many letters. H HL, excuse me. There's a lot of letters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. PWHPA. Yeah. Oh, it's PWHPA. Yes. Oh, players. I'm sorry. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. my confusion, my bad, my yeah, bad. Yeah. But so, she's with the NWHLPA. Right. Yes. And so they we're play to do, defensemen. You, you they bastard. might be defensive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's, we're going to bring on you on now. So we're going to bring on Anya Packer, who, uh, to her credit, after our last episode, reached out to Steve directly. Yes. And yes, because <laughs> it's it's always great when someone uh, ex extends an olive branch. Hey, you seem like you're struggling. We are struggling. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's what she did, rather than uh, smack me. So Anya, can you explain? What the NWHLPA is, because this is, it's so funny. There are three parties in this. It's the PWHPA, it's the NWHL, but everybody's forgotten about the NWHLPA, which is the actual players association for the <laughs> NWHL, which is sort of important. Yeah, that's me. And uh, I'll give you a little background on myself and what we do. Um, so I'm a former player. I played for the Connecticut Whale. Some might know me by Anya Badalino. I was married. Um, just recently to Madison Packer. Um, so kind of have a hockey name regardless of which one I say. Yeah, congratulations, um, <laughs> by the way. Yes. But the PA is um, a, not a union. So we always get this question, we're not a union. Um, and I always clear that up because I don't want to get, same as you guys, um, any confusion, anyone you know, mis misunderstanding what we do. Uh, we're a group, we have lawyers, we negotiate different terms on the p behalf of the players. We also negotiate terms with the league Every time we try to either increase salaries or increase player payout percentages, different things like that. So we function as a union. It just gets a little challenging when it comes to them taking dues and having um, incorporating separately. You know, there's a lot of questions about should we unionize or should we hold? So at this point, we've decided to hold. So not a formal union, but we do represent the players in the National Women's Hockey League. And let me just be clear about something, because I think this is an important detail, although very basic to you, no doubt. Are you paid yes. by the NWHL or by the players? I am not paid at all. Um, okay. So this is a big question I had when we kind of talked to uh, the CWHLPA in their fold in that uh, conversation. I'm not paid, nor are my lawyers. We all work pro bono. Wow. Um, I think we just you know, love the sport, either former players or just really passionate about it. But we've kind of all rallied to do this pro bono. Um, most importantly, want to drive the sport forward, not so much about you know, the three of us collecting any kind of wages or, or anything in that respect. Right. Okay. So I guess we'll get to the, the, the topic du jour, you know, the thing that has been, has been bubbling because, you know, obviously we, we do want to talk about the Twitch deal, but I think everybody wants to hear about, about what you know and what your side of this is. So our understanding of it, and please correct me as I go here, because I really want to clear this up. 
The NWHL is the last remaining professional women's hockey league. There was two. There in, is now in one. North in North America, yeah. right? Correct. You have 150 plus of the best athletes um, saying we're not going to play for the NWHL. Some of them are former CWHL players. Some of them are NWHL players last season. Mm -hmm. um, and, and some people have broken that pact and actually crossed, I guess, the quote-unquote picket line, even though there isn't really a picket line. Um, however, the, the idea here for the PWHPA is they want to what they, create what they call a sustainable league. Correct, right? Yeah. You, you have it all right so far. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I'm really sorry about this. No. The NWHL saying we have a sustainable league, we are growing revenue, we have a 50-50 rev share with the players like the NHL does, and this is the what we can pay you is based on the money we're bringing in. Is that correct? Right. The okay. whole goal in, in the two sides of it, and I'll tell you just a little bit just to color in right here because we're in a really good spot. So the whole goal on, on I'm going to say my, even though I don't represent the NWHL head office, but my team, um, our goal is this, to grow respective to how the sport is growing because, as everybody knows, in the second season of the NWHL, they overpromised and underdelivered majorly in a way that in, in all of the, you know, in a lot of players' eyes is unforgivable, right. as you've seen the huge schism here, but it was – okay, we're going to grow respective to how the business grows as opposed to saying the players deserve to be paid north of $10,000 a head. If the business isn't growing to substantiate that, we're going to have another pay cut on our hands. So instead, we decided to increase the salaries by way of this player revenue share. And for anybody that missed that, because I remember that story, but there might be people that missed the context of that. What was overpromised and then underdelivered on? Yes. Yeah. So in... Our second season, and this is when I was a player and I was not the head of the PA. Okay. Um, I was just actually a, a board member of the PA. Um, so our salary cap was formerly $270,000 per team, which made the base pay 10000 Plus there was also, um, I was a practice player at the time, so anytime I got put onto the roster, I was paid like a $10,000 a, a game player, mm -hmm. or a, excuse me, a, a season player. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was also room for negotiation. So, you know, it was a big Kelly Stack, Amanda Kessel contracts that were twenty seven or $26,000 um, for the season, which in a six-month season feels like double. Uh, right. So that was what our former pay structure was, was the $270,000 salary cap. And then the league adjusted it and said, hey, we're not going to make our numbers. We're either going to stop right here and close up shop, or we're going to cut the salaries down and go on a per game pay scale, which made us you know, independent contractors. It was like, it, it changed the structure a lot and it cut the pay significantly. Right. I believe it was 37%, but don't Whoa. quote me on that because again, I wasn't in the role I'm currently in. Since then we had a season of being paid per game per practice, as opposed to being salaried. And then my team, then I became the head of the PA, got a couple lawyers involved. We went back to employee-employer status, and now we're back on a salary cap. It was $100,000 last year. Now it's 150000 per team plus the revenue share. Sorry okay. if that was too much info. No, that's – I mean, compared to the NHL salary cap structure, that's actually quite nice to and clean to understand. Uh, yeah. You know, that's that's been the problem with the NHL. It's like, I don't even know what the hell this thing does you anymore. Even, you yeah. haven't mentioned the word escrow yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come big, on. Big, it's great. Big fan of that. <laughs> so, uh, the, 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 the for the game, uh, the, they're holding out because they don't think there's been a sustainable uh, uh, financial model out there. Why was it important for you to, uh, I don't know, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, stick around? Um, with uh, the NWHL and try to figure this out rather than, I guess, siding with them uh, yeah. and you know, doing st something else. St yeah, sticking with the holdout. Right. It's a great question. I mean, I always get asked this, like, you know, why wasn't I part of that? Honestly, part of it is I wasn't even spoken to about it. Um, it was a big thing that my lawyers and I were negotiating this contract. We were so excited the CWHL, unfortunately, which broke my heart because I'm a former CWHL person, um, the CWHL folded, and it left a huge gap. 
So our board got in touch. They started trying to put teams in Canada and expand to absorb the hit for those players. And in this whole, um, what I would call state of turmoil, I was in regular communication with the CWHLPA and it unfortunately got to the point where we scheduled a call with our, um, our internal team or, or that league's head office internal team, as well as some of the investors, some of the, the people that are putting their hard earned dollars on the line. And it kind of became a witch hunt as opposed to a collaborative conversation. And that's when I realized that the tide was turning and they weren't interested in playing with us, but more poking holes in what the NWHL was doing. And it became hard for me to rationalize stopping the progress of women's hockey since I see it on the internal side. You know, I'm part of deals. I'm part of conversations with the board. I'm part of conversations with the commissioner. I see what's happening. So when it kind of turns the the tide of, well, this league doesn't work because we don't think it's sustainable. It wasn't a conversation of this is what the goal of sustainability looks like, or this is where we want the money to come from, or this is what we want. It was more close the door, you're not sustainable, end of discussion, and not so much a business conversation. So to me, I just felt like I was going to stay where our lawyers negotiated a really solid contract, and I believed, and I do, I I know because I see it on the internal side, but that the deals are coming in, the business is working and growing, and it's not necessarily a smoke and mirrors. It's just hard to communicate uh, private businesses dollars and cents to an amalgamation of all of the employees. You know, mm-hmm. it's not it's not so easy then to just say, open your books and I'm going to play for you because it's a private business. So it's hard. I, and I don't know if that answered the question. Well, it's, it's <laughs> interesting because, you know, it's... That's that's been the the, the problem, and, and that's what caused so, so much of an uproar for for me personally when I when I said it on the last episode. Uh, I said I don't. I'm unclear on exactly what the for the game movement, not what they want. I know what they want in abstract. Well, because they, they said it. Yeah, but... and, and 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 any any person who's in any business wants the business to be successful and sustainable. I think that's a fair point. What I, I'm not clear on is what their expectations on the specifics are. And I'm just wondering if you might be able to shed a little bit of light. Have you had any conversations with them, uh, maybe about even amalgamating, but have you had any conversations with them about what exactly it is that they're looking for? In a perfect world, what is the end game here? Yeah, I've only spoken to trusted resources that work with them. There has been a pretty firm line in we're just not willing to communicate, which is if the stance is that firm, I understand what they're trying to do, right? In like, hey, we're just not talking to you. We're going to do it on our own. So what I've heard is that the goal is to kind of formulate this PLL circus model type, very light investments like, hey, Steve, you know, we're going to come to your barn for a weekend. These are all the resources we need for the weekend. And your investment is light. It's a one-time investment. It's very clean. And and then you move away from it and and you go to the next place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then you might call somebody else. Hey, Anya, this is what we're going to do at your barn. Here's what we need. This is what we're doing. And it kind of follows that PLL model of circus touring with the sport. Right. By circus, but, you don't mean disorganized. Like in the... In the no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exhibition. Yeah, literal. yeah it's an actual tour. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. I don't mean it in any negative way, but that's right. what I've heard the goal is. I don't necessarily know. Again, I'm not speaking to anybody directly. I'm more speaking to people that are speaking to people. Okay. So it's interesting. It's all a very interesting effect of, you know, then it kind of poses the question of what does sustainability look like? Is that a sustainable lifestyle? How long can a woman live like that? Is that professional? I mean, it, it just raises so many other questions. Is that, what they, is that what they believe is a sustainable model, though? Is that what, is, or is that just for this season? Like, is that I'm not certain I okay. heard again, I'm only saying I heard, but I heard that's the goal, the goal Okay. with player payout tiers, right? Like right now they're not getting paid. They're taking a gap and they're not getting paid. They're paying dues to be a part of the PWHPA. But I've heard that the goal is base tier players make this second tier players make this and third tier players make this. And it's three clean boxes. Mm-hmm. Again, I'm not speaking with any, business leaders of that team. I wish I was, but I just don't know. 
Um, so I'm kind of in that same guessing game with you guys on what their goal and their strategy looks like. So, so you're a little bit unclear as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Well, okay. Okay. So, cause, I'm just making sure we're not alone. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Because, you know, you, you honestly, in our position, you just feel like an idiot, right? Like, you're like, what am I not getting about this? And um, and I definitely know that there's people out there who think I am an idiot. Um, but my... You're my, sitting across from Yeah, me. right? Um, but, on it, <laughs> you know, I, I think... The, the, the part that stood out to me about what you just said, more than what they're doing, is the communication. And you said, firm, they are not talking to you. And I, it's right. one thing to not talk to the NWHL. In a vacuum, you can understand that, right? Like well, that's it's, it's the league. I get that. But right. you are not the league. So why won't they talk to you? I think that there's a general mistrust in all things that start with NWHL, regardless of what side you sit on. I mean, I would be happy to blow up any organization harming the players that I represent, whether it doesn't matter who it is. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think where the mistrust comes is the second I say I'm the PA executive director of the NWHL PA. Then the conversation stops there because it's less about, the players, and I look like more of an advocate for the league, I'm only advocating for our players, our women's professional hockey players, to get paid what they deserve, which they're not yet, but we're working on it, Mm -hmm. to get paid what they deserve, to get treated with the right benefits, and to ensure that we're building them a sustainable income moving forward. Because if you look at the numbers of the WNBA in a vacuum, right? right, you have the average player lasting three and a half years. And the, and the average salary being about sixty seventy thousand dollars $70,000 in three and a half years for sixty seventy thousand dollars $70,000 to then say, welcome to the world, get a job, mm-hmm. it becomes really hard. And that's where we're not, in my opinion, yet at a point where we're finding the right happy medium. Because if you're telling my wife, who's a recruiter, who you know, plays in the NWHL, hey, Madison, quit your job. We're going to give you $20,000 to be a professional hockey player and you're going to tour the U S I don't, it's just hard to rationalize that to be sustainable or that that income is going to last her six years, right? Two years being a professional hockey player. I don't know the answer, but right now with the income that I see women's hockey generating, it's very hard without saying, Hey, parent company give me a handout to pay these players more it's very hard to say let's give them all fifty thousand dollars or let's or even the 50 is enough i don't even think it is oh well no it's not and that's the thing is that these are i think we can all agree that that the the actual wage that people should be paid based on their skills in this case is far above what you the, the figure that you just mentioned but the question comes down to an organization with sales ties and revenue to support that it, it it has to go for years. You know, whether or not the, 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 the play, just based on business, you, you form relationships, right? And those sales relationships get deeper and deeper and deeper as they go. But it seems as though this is sort of like you said, it's a revenue split of 50-50. That's the revenue that's here right now, right? With the right. NWHL. And I, so my, I guess my, my question to you, it has to be frustrating because um, years ago, I had the fortune. I was fortunate to interview Cassie Campbell Pascal with Saskia yep. Stewart, uh, who was a CWHL employee as well, and uh, we had a podcast. and And Cassie Campbell Pascal was great. She came on and she talked about how the schism in women's hockey between the CWHL and the NWHL could not last. She was she was very adamant about having one league, and she was on which we should yeah totally. And she was on the uh, she was on the board of directors for the CWHL, and she went rogue and was like, "This can't last. We we got to find a bridge here. This has got to change." And right. now it seems with the CWHL gone, another schism has developed. Is Completely, it... we've resegmented the market, but in a way that's been more public and more harmful to investors because it feels volatile right this is our problem anytime that and women i'm going to say this is a woman's problem anytime that a woman stands up for what she believes that she deserves it becomes a whoa 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 i don't want to invest in that that's very stressful to me and i believe that at any point you know maddie and i were joking on the couch the other day like if we were men we'd be millionaires Mm -hmm. like i would be making league minimum 
and that's fine. <laughs> that's and still great. <laughs> she's probably making a billion dollars, which is great. But <laughs> that's the hardship is, you know, when we try to move forward and we try to pioneer forward, there's so many things that have to grow at the same time. Do you know, we can't just say, hey, we're women. We deserve more, which we should be paid more. Just so that side note, we absolutely should. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if the fans, the viewership, I mean, women's tennis is the highest paid athletes. If you look at the Forbes list, top 10, all tennis players, because they grew exponentially, but so did their media deals, so did sponsorship, so did the fandom of what they do. So people paying all of this money to see them, I mean, to, to be a part of the tennis association. Right. And how, how monumental that absorption of men's and women's tennis just being tennis as a whole. I mean, there's just so many things that have to grow at the same time. So if we kind of stick our, our you know, foot down and say this is what we deserve and we don't grow respectively to how the rest of the market is growing, the money is not going to be there or it's going to run out pretty quickly. And put that on top of the fact that we centralize our team. So right. every four years, our best players get plucked right out of the mix, regardless. What do you mean by that? Sorry, I, I'm, I'm confused on that detail. Like national team players. Every oh, four years for the Olympics yes. get plucked out. Of course, yes. So there's so many challenges and so many folds. And right. the amount that we are owed and the amount that we should not accept being, you know, I'm going to say air quotes, professional hockey players, not even making enough to live in some of the markets that we're being put in is absolutely inappropriate. We should definitely be making more. How do we get there is the question, and that's the biggest schism between our two sides of the fence. Right, and the big question is how do you get there? You're you're sticking with the NWHL and the and the players in that league, trying to figure it out that way. Uh, the 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 for the team or for the game uh, players uh, sitting out. It's it sounds like you have the same goal, and what I've been thinking about is in order to find a sustainable model, there's going to need to be obviously a revelation. There's going to have to be some sort of creativity. And then when I saw the the news about the Twitch deal, I was like, well, that's really interesting. That is an outside-the-box sort of idea. So I was just wondering what you thought about the Twitch deal and what it means uh, for your players. Yeah. First of all, anytime we can get somebody to buy our content, we're that much more validated. So when we have this conversation with a streaming platform that's looking to get into sport, you know, formerly uh, or, or mostly known for e-gaming and things to that nature, and, you know, the different ways that fans engage with that world, if they want to tap into live sports and they turn to women's hockey or any woman's sport for that matter and say, we're starting with you, it becomes a monumental state of change where our players are then empowered to know, hey, anyone around the world can see them like they could with with Twitter or YouTube or any of those other platforms, but being a, a feature on a platform that's changing the, the industry normal, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's younger folks, it's, you know, different ways of engaging. It's a different entire idea than just being on TV, which how many people have cut the cord to this point, you know, h- how do you get it into that and tap into that in the right way? Um, I think it's really interesting. And I think that the fact that they're streaming our games for free, you don't necessarily need a Twitch prime account, um, or anything to that effect really says they love our content or they want to get more people involved in our content and they see it as a scalable business, which is helping us in conversations with new potential investors or excuse me, um, sponsors or different people that have either gone cold and now are reinterested. It changes the way we're hitting the market. And it changes our demographic. And I think it's really nice because it makes our players feel that much more empowered. It's definitely cool, and it's going to make uh, the, the games easier to watch. I was just wondering if the league uh, does, does it, or the league, sorry, the deal, does it benefit uh, the players financially in any significance? And also, will the players be able to enjoy the same benefits that um, other Twitch streamers get? So, like, for example, uh, I, can, I can have, you know, a bunch of Twitch bits and if I'm watching an NWHL, uh, NWHL game and I feel like just throwing, I don't know, $50 worth of bits at the league or at the team uh, because I'm enjoying the game, I can do that. Like, w- Would the league be able to collect that and would the players be able to benefit from it? Yeah, there's a lot of accessibility 
Well, first, first point of the question, yes, the players are getting 50% of the broadcast amount. So the way the breakout goes is, say your podcast gives us $100,000, gives the league $100,000, okay. just for round numbers. It gets divided in half, the league gets 50%, and the players get 50%. So that 50% breaks out to all of the teams equally. So 10, 10, 10, 10, and 10. If I own 10% of our salary cap, I get 10% of the Riveters' $10,000. Okay. So that's how the players are paid, just basically. Then Twitch is paying for all of the – they're doing all the installation, all the filming, all the streaming. That's all on them. That was their part of the deal. For us, if you want to put all the different emotes, the different pieces to it, that's all stuff that we're working out with the Twitch team to see how that works. You know, it's new to us. It's new to me. I've never um, – utilize the Twitch capabilities before, but it's all things that we're going to work through and have hammered down by the midpoint of the season. I know bit and emotes are the words that I keep hearing from the Twitch community, which I love. Yeah. Um, I just haven't fully wrapped my hands around the capabilities of it yet, but I believe that we will have accessibility to all of that. And then if any dollars come in from that functionality, we'll get half. Excellent. That's, That's awesome. great. That, that was something I was really curious about. And, and to get back to something you just mentioned, Twitch is covering the broadcast themselves, so they're they're going to be they're going to be uh, I guess um, uh, providing the equipment. They're going to be employing the camera ops, et cetera, et cetera. I am. Let's go eighty percent sure on that. Okay. okay. I have our main our main operation or our head of operations for the league head office just got married and was on his honeymoon. But to what I understand of the deal, that is all correct. Okay, that's interesting, because what I've said in the past, at least with the CWHL, and they did eventually do this, I was like, you know, why not just, you know, stick up a camera and just throw it on YouTube to stream, and everyone I spoke to was like, well, easier said than done, right? right? It's it's not quite as, as simple as that. So for, for Twitch to be covering all that, that's really interesting. I want to see what sort of production value they have. Yeah, we had the same robust production when it came to the Twitter game of the month or the Twitter game of the week, we had to the point where I was like, I used to get on and do broadcasting when I didn't dress for the game. And they were like, Whoa, no, you need this. You need that. You need to be plugged in. You need to have this mic, that I'm like, all right, I don't, I can't do all that. I don't know anything about any of this. So I'm out. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. So it's been a lot more in like, I would say last year was really robust in terms of what our broadcast looked like. I know that the streams aren't always perfect, um, but I'm excited to see what the Twitch stream looks like. I think it's going to be a lot more accessible. Interesting. Okay. Anya, from your perspective and, and I want, I mean, it seems like you're very positive and excited about this deal, which is cool. Um, if the next six months could go perfectly in your mind, Okay, so people come together, we get the best players on the ice, that sort of thing, right? What does the what does that look like to you in six months? So let's say six months from now, you know, things are not necessarily perfect or patched up, but they we have found common ground and everybody's agreed on one on one league. How does that look to you and what do you think it's gonna to take to get it done? In my opinion, to work together for one league. Really, it would just have to take a sit-down meeting. I think that once we air our grievances as a unity, as a, as a community, at unity, that was a weird word to use, as a community, and say, hey, this is what we distrust, this is what we like, this is what we don't like, let's build something together, let's build, this is what we want, this is our goal, this is our crazy want list, you know, whenever we can start having these conversations, we're going to be that much more powerful. Yeah. Like, I think it starts there. I don't know. I think it starts there because a lot of the questions, like we haven't gotten a formal ask list from anybody and where it's hard for me, not the league head office. I don't even care more me. I don't know what to ask for, you know, mm -hmm. like what do you ask for when people just say, I don't want what you have. Okay. Well, what do you want? No, no comment doesn't get me closer to that. So, right. A lot of it is guessing on my end. I'm like, what would I love? Uh, I would love investment plans. I would love this so that I'm out there sourcing different companies to start working with to give us financial advisors. And how do I know if that's going to move the needle? You know, what if I, what if I get that all buttoned up for 2020, 2021 season and people are like, no one cares about that. Right. I just did a whole year's worth of work on nothing. Well, yeah. And that's so 
it, and I guess my follow-up to that is, is it frustrating that a, a players association formed and didn't include all the players? Because you just said you weren't called. Yeah, I, I think it is really frustrating. And it's also frustrating because, and I'm not, it, it's on both sides of the fence. Sure. Whether it's media, fans, leadership, whomever, there's so much misinformation in the world of women's sports and especially women's hockey, because there's so much unknown. So when one person speculates or one person says, hey, I think this will happen, or I would love for this to happen, and somebody hears it the wrong way and it gets construed and misconstrued and turned and turned, then we have you know people Twitter blasting each other about who to support. Like, support them all. Yeah. If you like hockey, support them all. I don't know what a win looks like. Does a win look like the PWHPA having a great season and us having a great season? Is that winning? I don't know. No, in my opinion. No, we should work together. But if both succeed, great. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's so hard. It's so hard to work out what I want. It's so, like, well, everything feels political right now. Like, every, like literally right. everything. If you could name a subject, it feels political. It devolves into nasty venom spitting. Uh, I think... This one is is one of those things that's a real hot button issue, and that's and that's why we're so appreciative that you made time for us today, and we're so appreciative that you gave us your perspective because I think your perspective of this entire thing is the one that's the least represented. How do the players and the player representatives in the NWHL feel about this? We've heard from the NWHL. We've heard. We've seen Danny Ryland. You know, she did a couple interviews that came out today with ESPN and the Athletic. You know, we've heard. Uh, a little bit from from the For the Game movement, it's so nice to hear from you. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate you guys just letting me kind of vent. Sometimes I feel like <laughs> I don't have the right information and I'm, I'm happy to say I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But I always feel like, you know, if I could put out a letter to the public and, you know, the right person hear it, maybe that brings us a little bit closer to understanding. I, I don't know. I would love women's hockey to grow and I would love our players to get paid more money. And I would love all of these deals coming on both sides of the fence to benefit all hockey players. Like that's where I get frustrated is when somebody says, Hey, I'm willing to pledge money for you and you and I are at odds and we both could have been benefiting from that. That's where I'm like, Oh, I really wish we could have come to terms. Well, um, I got to tell you as a father of a little girl now, that's exactly how I feel. I really, I want this to go. I want this to grow and be amazing. And so. Anya, uh, Adam and Jesse are really good at letting people vent. <laughs> That's what, I'm glad you got to enjoy that. Good. Thank you for this. I really appreciate it, guys. I really appreciate you guys talking about us. The more we can get podcasts that are in communities that have a amazing response rate, talking about women's hockey, whether it's, hey, we hate the NWHL, we love the NWHL, we hate the PWK, we love them. Like, Stop when we when we stop doing that and just say women's hockey deserves more. Let's build them up. The better we're doing. So Agreed. I hope you thank get the, you guys so much. No problem. I hope you get the communication you want. I hope you get the progress you want. And I'm excited to watch a few NWHL games on Twitch. Right. Exactly. This year. Exactly. See how all that goes. And you're welcome on any time. Thanks again. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Take care. Bye. You know, I know that we're gonna catch shit for that. And I know because it represents an opinion that's unpopular to certain people. Uh, but I have to say, I'm... But what is I the, what was, is the hold opinion? On, I was, hold on, just let me finish this one. Sure. I was very impressed with that. Yeah. That is a... That's that how you a, become the executive director. You know your shit. <laughs> bingo. Well, and, and not that I didn't expect to be, but it's one of those things where that makes sense to me. She explained what the goals were for her in her position. Personally, and she's, yeah. and she's given us an idea of what a perfect world for her looks like. And that's why I wanted to ask that question. And I hope that we get a chance uh, and we, we are going to reach out. Like we, Again, I think our goal here should be to represent all sides here. We've heard Danny Ryland's side, ESPN and, and The Athletic ran the story. We could have her on and she would probably repeat the same answers. But I'm fine with that. I don't care. Um, I, there's, I, uh, I, I have spoken to at least one player from the For the Game Movement. It's just Anya reached out, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah sure, for we, sure." So we would maybe... love to have if if anybody from the For the Game movement would like to talk to us or can talk to us, can represent what the the body uh, 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 represents or wants to talk about that. We would love yeah. to have you on. I'll work and on if it. not, Steve's going to work on it um, mm -hmm. because Steve's the one who's who knows all the hockey people. I, I just think wow. it's really important here that we take the venom out of this and go. And quite honestly, we, we look at it and go, okay, this isn't going to be perfect and not everybody's going to like it. But guess what? Not everybody likes the way the NHL's made up. 
But well, and and here's the we're we're talking about a league that was formed by a former player who was inspired by watching Canada and the United States in the 2014 Olympics. Like that was why the NWHL was formed. And you can love Danny Ryland, you can hate Danny Ryland, but that's why it was formed. This is a league formed by a woman. Well, and it's not like this show has been notoriously pro Danny Ryland. No, <laughs> like we in haven't. the past. We have so many so many of the stuff uh dare I say stunts uh, she's pulled in the past. We've been like, what the hell is she doing? What is, she, is she nuts? We've been talking about this, like, I remember we had Kate Samini on. Yes. And, and that was that was a lifetime ago for her because now she's, like, covering just general news and not doing that it's anymore. Just, it's a little absurd that there's any negative reaction and information and perception about any of this because everybody should just collectively just be coming together to grow women's hockey. Right. Like, why are you reacting it, negatively that is, that, to any of the news? Seems that seems to be the goal, though. But yeah. they're not doing that. You know it sounds I mean? like no conversations are being had that's, between the two sides. That's got to be the frustrating part. And that's what I was trying to say last episode is, why are, why are you not talking? And I think it's right. because the hope is this league goes away and the NHL is forced, their hand is forced. I think that's the goal. I think that's the goal. And and if I'm wrong, I don't know. I mm-hmm. would love someone for the for the game movement to come on and tell me about it because that's what we're hoping for here. We're trying. This is a part one of a conversation that's going to go a little bit longer. But I've read articles on this, and I'm still not clear on what exactly it is. Yeah, and you're that's... not you're not ill informed on this. It's uh, sometimes you read the it's course just... material and you don't. You're still a little I don't get it foggy about it. And just I, because yeah, I just think I look at the come situation on, here. From a business perspective, Take it easy. yes, people deserve a living wage. The revenue's got to support it, guys. And if you think, I, I, if you think that the NHL and the owners, the cheapest owners in the world, those guys got to be rich because they're cheap. Do you, th- you think that it's going to be any better <laughs> with those guys running the show? We're yeah. already extremely critical of what they're like with social issues, uh-huh. mm-hmm. with drugs and alcohol, mm-hmm. with. Uh, 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 sections of abuse and that sort of thing that we've seen um obviously getting better but still not perfect is that who you want running your league well and and anya said something uh really interesting and it shows how far we got to go so the nwhl i remember salaries were something like ten thousand to twenty five thousand at the very top and very few players were making that Mm -hmm. uh and then she talks about the wnba players making sixty to seventy thousand dollars american and when she says that, when she said that, I went, "Oh, well, hey, that's pretty good." But then she immediately continues mm-hmm. and goes, "Well, you can't play for three years at that amount of money, and then welcome yeah. to the world." You that was your like, whole oh, damn life. You're right. You're you graduate right. university, and then after university, you spend three years making sixty grand, and then it's just and then now, it's, so, and now they're, go they're, ha- go get another job. Yeah. Like, no. So they're they're doing it financially at least three times uh, as well. Probably more, right. and it's still not good enough. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Or it's still not where it needs to be. Ideal. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's, a, there's a lot. There's a lot here. There's man. a lot to work through here. The point is that I don't know if the NHL would be the perfect picture that everybody thinks it would be. And in fact, I I, I know it won't be because the NHL is not perfect, and nothing is perfect. No, that's ridiculous so... <laughs> that you would ever you would ever expect any league of but any stature better? to or run anything perfect. ever. Yeah, <laughs> but is it better? And you know what? The for the game. Uh, uh, I want to, association. Maybe, maybe they're right. Yeah. Maybe there is a better option. We just haven't heard it yet, and that's. I'm sure. genuinely curious about this, well, and I know there's a lot of people who have a lot of opinions on this. But sorry, I want to hear it directly from them. What, what, what is it? When they came out, and they're like, uh, the CWHL, the NWHL are unsustainable the way we're going. I think the response from us was a pretty resounding, "Yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh-huh. good for you. Absolutely." Now we're at the now what stage. Yes. What's the next step? Yeah, and we've been asking that for months now. And these things take time. I don't think anyone's wrong. <laughs> no, there's no bad and good guy on this. No, or at least I not just, with the players. I just want to know what's next. Yeah. What is the next step? And Fair. we haven't really got a concrete answer there yet. We I, will. Just, I just don't like the idea of two sides fighting against each other if the greater goal is just growing women's hockey. Uh, you know what, and I'll be... And that, it seems like if you're not willing to have conversations, that's what you're yeah, doing. Not even necessarily right. fighting. And that's just, the thing, yeah, is that there hasn't been the allowance right. of conversation. Yeah. It's, it's like we talk about Online this, and I gotta well. tell you, we talk about this stuff, and I get people saying, how could you even ask the question? What do you mean, how can I even <laughs> ask the question? Easily, that's with my your mouth. job. 
<laughs> my, I am not an expert, guys. I'm a host, and I ask questions that I don't understand the answers to. <laughs> and sometimes I ask questions that I do understand the answers to, but I know my audience might not. That's my job. You tell me. And I, I, I get frustrated that we are shutting down conversation mm -hmm. in the name of, I picked a side, you picked a side, and there can be no in-between. Well, guess what? Eventually, with these two sides, there's going to have to be an in-between. De decisions are going to have to be made. There's going to have to be something. And I, yeah. the one thing I want to ask, and I want to ask the For the Game Movement about this, and I asked um, uh, Anya about it. I found it interesting when they did do this, that they picked... You know, they, they had, obviously, they had the, the body of players that they have, that they picked. But they don't represent everyone. Like, I thought the goal here, if it, the goal is to better is, is to better do it, this for everyone, why don't they represent everyone? This was the question from the beginning, like, from when the news broke and we had Haley on when she had that ridiculous right. day. And I was she like, was so like, I don't even know. Well, right. yeah, and we said, we, and by the way, congrats to Haley Salvian, yeah, who is seriously. now the yeah. Ottawa uh, beat reporter for the Athletics. Yes. What, what we uh, asked that day was, wait, so is the NWHL still a thing? And the answer was, uh, I don't know, I think I so. Because you, some players... <laughs> we were like, what? Yeah. Some players chose to keep playing and some did not. So right. why did they pick each side? And there's well, and just maybe, no clear answer. And maybe there, maybe maybe the membership is open on the for the game side, but I can't imagine that it's just like because they're they're all paying their dues and they're not paying right. Like they're not getting paid, but they're paying union dues and they're mm -hmm. and they're contributing to this organization. I don't even know if membership to that group is open or not. But Anya wasn't wasn't even talked to about it. She said that. So that's part where it's like, okay, so did were were people picked and, and chosen, or was it? Was it, hey, listen, this is open to everybody mm -hmm. uh, if you choose to take it. And that's what I don't, I don't know. I don't there's know a, the answer to that. There's a lot. But I think everyone involved hopes it ends up in the same place. Yeah. And that's got to be the goal. So anyway, thank you for listening to that part of it because I think it's important. These are important conversations. And I got to tell you, it sounds super cheesy, but, you know, it, it hit me when we were at the CWHL All-Star Game all those years ago. I said, if I ever had a daughter, I would want to bring her to this. Yeah. And now I have one. Yeah. And... Now looking at this, what if, she, like, she may never, she might be like, Hock, hockey's lame, dad, and <laughs> you're a loser, and I'm cool, and I've got other shit going on. And that's fine. My dad's into auto racing. I could care less. But if my, my daughter happened to be into hockey, not, at a, not necessarily even playing it, just liked it like you, Steve. You mm -hmm. didn't play, but you liked it. I liked you it. play now. Um, I'm really good, too. I want to be able to know. <laughs> I, I want her to know. That there's a professional league that she can watch with players that she can directly feel like she's represented by. Right. Whether or not she ever becomes one of them. And I think that's really important. Uh, because I knew what it was like as a young man, or as a boy, to, to love Doug Gilmore. Yeah. And I could be Doug Gilmore if I was going to accept I didn't have any of the talent. I think it's oh, important that to have... little in the giddy-up. Right, exactly. Yep. I think it's important to have that representation. We talk a lot about representation. Yes. This is legitimate stuff. This is really important. And you thought that before you had a daughter, and there's plenty of record of it. And well, I'm not even trying to. I'm not trying such... to justify it. I'm trying to tell you where I'm coming from, and this is why it's yeah. personally why I find it so interesting. Well, and the and the tech geek in me is the Twitch thing. Cool. I I can't get past it. It's really <laughs> really neat, and I don't think people understand if everything she was saying was right because she seemed a little foggy on some of the details. Mm -hmm. um, if Twitch is actually Putting their financial might it sounds and like infrastructure the yeah, behind cool. it, yeah. the the actual uh, they're gonna have, I, I don't know, floor directors and 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 their their own camera people, and it's their problem to look after the stream. Are they gonna have hosts? Yeah. Are they are they well, gonna you be? Well, you have to think, right? Well, I don't know. They don't have to. Interesting development in the in, and this is an adjunct to what you're saying. So just bear with me sure. on this. Dazone, right? Yeah. Or Dazen, as everybody calls it. That is apparently owned by a Russian guy, Russian oligarch, <laughs> who has piles of money. Yeah. Of and this is just something that he wants to do on the side. So he started with, and I heard this from somebody on the phone the other day, um, that he started with Korean soccer and has worked his way up and bought like tier two British football. Yeah, and he, like All he's doing is just buying rights and buying rights. And he's slowly working his way up the chain of professional sports. And he's getting to the top. Like he got he EPL. He NFL. It was yeah. a joke a few years ago, oh, I yeah. remember. Because remember because the, 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 the NFL thing NFL. didn't <laughs> freaking yeah. work? Yeah. So the media remember, landscape yeah. is changing. Yeah. And Amazon's probably looking at that and going, 
well, we need to start sports as well. Yeah, you need to stop. I think some people are looking at it like, oh, Twitch. It's, where, it's, all the, it's where all the gaming dorks hang out. Dude, it's owned by Amazon. It's a broadcasting platform, period. It's enormous. It's a, it's a, it's a big deal. I don't know. I'm fascinated to see how it goes. I am too. And I really enjoy the idea that, okay, the money they get from the deal itself is great, but if they're able to generate money from just, hey, that was a really good game. Here's twenty bucks, or that was a really not? good game. Here's a hundred bucks. Like, here's not here's that's, bits and emotes. Not and, that that's how you want your business model to go going forward, but you know, because you you want the majority no. of your dollars coming in. But if it adds, I, great. I mean, you know, randomly relying on donations isn't exactly what I would sustainable call sustainable. <laughs> but it's if it's an option, why the hell not take advantage of that option? I I think it's really neat. Yeah. What if they started a YouTube channel where they reacted to every game Whoa. and they put a camera on like a bunch of books and like maybe like a desk lamp so they could have some good lighting Stupid. and they It'll just never yelled work. at it. Yeah. It'll never work. What if they have Stupid. one dog? No, two dogs. Oh! <laughs> Victory puppy. Puppies. But the second dog wasn't their decision. <laughs> <laughs> at all. Like, <laughs> cutting a slice upon them. And let's be honest, the first dog also and both birds. <laughs> both oh yeah, you birds. and the kitchen renovation and oh, m- most was... things in my life. And the paint on the wall. <laughs> and the literally Just, You came home one day. I came home from the Bradford book signing and there was paint on the wall and I'm like, I guess we're painting. You know, you ought to be grateful. <laughs> I know. Because it's nice not to have to make those choices. I am the one you in our You know what? House. It really is. I am the one in our house. I okay, so my mom obviously Hosted, hosted a show with a lot of interior design. What? I spent a lot of time around interior the design. The Alanis Morissette show. That's right. On CTV. Yeah. For kids who can't read good. Or Alanis, as it's known. And <laughs> so I, I, I spent a lot of time with interior designers. So I'm the one in a lot of cases who, who knows how to really kind of po- tie a room together. My wife's like, I could tie an outfit together, no problem. My wife's a stylist. But she's like, with rooms, I suck. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So usually for me, I'm like, I'm the house guy. You get a good rug. So so sometimes I don't want to make those choices. Because then I got to be like, well, do you like this? Or do you like this? Or do you like this? Or do you like this? (laughs) See, whereas SL, I have to say, I respect her approach. Mrs. Dangle's approach is great. Because she's like, this is what it is. Oh, just complete aggression. This is what it be. Absolutely. (laughs) Just stubborn Scottish (laughs) aggression. I love it. I love it. It's It's great. It's great. Because like sometimes I'll go back at her. Like, what? No, why are you doing this? And she'd be like, well, all right, what do you want to do? And then I go, ugh, now I got to think. <laughs> yeah, nice. Sometimes you train not to think. <laughs> and then we just go with whatever she how wants. Are the, uh, how are the cabinets? Did they get fixed? Dude, they're awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that kitchen looks great. I just want to say. It's a great kitchen. I'm you guys got to come by and check it out. Maybe we can have a meeting or a barbecue or whatever. One or the other. Could we do both? Nope. No, nope. not possible. We no. cannot. That's separate nights. Those, do one. Okay, Those two all right. things don't go right. inside. Let's do the press conference. Well. Let's do the trivia. The trivia conference. You guys got pens? You guys got papers? Uh, I got uh, a phone. I can Does that work? Paper. No, we need... We never know what random crap is here. I could have used my I don't know cookie wrapper you thing. You got a pen? Uh, I do not. I do not come prepared at all. I the champion does not need to come prepared. I got a pen. The I got champion a pen is the pen. champion. Steve's got a pen. Here. Piece of paper. I got him a paper. Oh, I got him a paper. I, I, got, I got a paper. Now you just ripped a piece of paper from nothing. All right, all right. We get it. You're strong. Okay. We still don't have a name. Some people have been throwing out some suggestions. Uh, Steve Dangle trivia. Was, was, uh, Whoa. But that was, Whoa. That was way out of the box. <laughs> SDT. <laughs> SDT. Um, are you smarter than a hockey YouTuber? That's pretty good. That's not bad. That's that pretty good. Boy the answer is always yes. I like that game. Yes. Yes. There's a couple other ones I forgot to write down. But today's uh, trivia comes from someone who goes by the name The Great Domsky on Twitter. What position does Nick Robertson play? <laughs> What, what was the goalie what, next? What was the name from a few episodes back that we said had to be included in every Reddit name? It was like Hurricane Pinaz or something. Oh, like that. Pinaz oh. fifteen or something. <laughs> It was something <laughs> wacky. Sorry. I, I, just, I listened to that episode the other day. I'm like, wow, that was actually really funny. I don't remember talking about that. Uh, thank God. I think the show was getting a little too highbrow for a second. Right. Exactly. Right, right, of course. Right, right. Of course. Okay. So what we're, are we going going? With, we're going with Leaf Trivia. All right. Okay. Because uh, it seems like you guys are both good at that. Shut no. up. <laughs> okay. I wrote Leafs at the top of my thing, so I feel like we're taking notes. All Let's right. go. First question. You okay. put the name and date. Feel like you got... All right. That's part mark. After the 7 08 Leaf season was over. I'm already out. <laughs> Team captain Matt Sundin signed as a free agent 
with the Vancouver Canucks, leaving the Leafs captainless for the 08-09 season. During that season, the Leafs had five alternate captains. Oh. Who were the A's? Oh, I hate oh, you. Oh, my dear. Every correct answer is a point. Good Lord. For the, Work on your list. Oh. I need five A's for the 08-09 season. Give them to me, Good Steve Dangle God. and Adam Wild. Well, we're going to need you to stretch there. <laughs> I wish uh, I could hum the uh, Hockey Night in Canada theme song that TSN owns. Boo. By the way, it so, I know we're, we're technically employees of the same company, but it has always seemed so out of place when they play that. <laughs> yep. Like, da da TSN Tuesday Night Local Hockey. It always makes me feel Like, yeah, just give it back. Like, what do you, come on. All right, guys, it's a Tuesday night game between the Leafs and Minnesota Wild. Fart. Fart, give me Ray Ferraro and shut up. Go to the show in the snow. Go to the show. All right, you guys got the five? No, I very don't. All right. Two might be it. I'm not going to lie. Um, five, okay. five guys. Oh eight, oh nine. Think back, think back. Oh, it's the oh season that Sundin left. Matt Sundin. I think the answers are very depressing. Yeah. They oh are well, good. yeah. It's Leafs history. Of course, uh, it's depressing. What else would it be? I have like four defensemen written down. It's got to be one <laughs> forward in there. Fuck. What? Who even played for it? Tim Brent is the one that keeps it's, coming to mind. Uh, no, he wasn't a Leaf yet. Uh, not a, <laughs> Whoa, he, this is pre-Tim Brent. I think it was pre-Tim oh, world. <laughs> friggin', it was dark. Uh, oh! Mm. Uh, also, the regular season standings. I think it's 4-1, Steven. Yeah. Yeah, it's 4-1, four, four. Four. Oh, shit, I'm going to blow this lead. Yeah, 4-1, uh, <laughs> I have five. Adam's, Adam's one in four. I have five really depressing answers. Uh... For the 0809 season? Oh, who are the five A's? Man. See, okay, you know how the Leafs finished last 15, 16, but the season before was actually the more painful one? Mm. To me, that's how I remember 0809. 0809 was bad. Although, oh, yeah. 9 10, they didn't even have a first round pick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was All right. so shit. I, I, got, nope. I just have four names written down. I'm not even. All right, one more, Adam. Pull one down. Uh, 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 it's from that era. Uh, you might get it right. I, mm, I, I sort of want to change one of my answers. because I cannot remember who played forward for that's, them back that's then. That's all right. All right, here we go. All right, all right. Read, read a name, Steve, and then if you got it, Adam, you'll check it out. Actually, you just na- read, a, read a name and oh. we'll see if we got it. All right, cool, cool. Uh, let me pull up. Let's, one, Brad May. Oh, wow. Uh, nope, don't no, have no. Him. Two, Dominic Moore. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh my no! God, Dominic no. Moore the first time. No, That's don't have him. Really well. Uh, three. Good. Jamal Mayers. I have Jamal Mayers. Uh, Steve's gone. I do not have Jamal Mayers. <laughs> Four. Nikolai Antropov. Oh, he was wow. still on the team. Jesus. I yeah. I think, and then he got traded to like New York. For oh, a... there's um. Well, the great Domsky put down six names here. Uh, okay. Well, oh, we'll okay. But so he, he wrote five alternate okay, So well. there, I guess there's six. Um, Ooh, that's still bad. I was going to write Nick Andrebov. <laughs> Nick Andrebov. Pavel Kubina. Oh, yes! yes! You guys got him? I scratched him out. Oh, I, scratched him out. I scratched him out. It's 1-1. One, one. It's 1-1. One, yes! one. one yes! more name. Shit! I scratched him out. Final name. Tomas Caberlet. Okay, yes! I got Thomas Caberlet. All right, so you guys tied on the first question. Woo! Two, two. Well Woo! done. Two. Yeah. Right. Through, baby. <laughs> Through, baby. I thought uh, Cabrillet well was gone by then. No, uh, no. I mean, not Cabrillet. I had, who did you have? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, give us My answers have. were Matt Stajan. Ooh, good guess. Jamal Mayers. Mm-hmm. I had Pavel Kabina. Scratched him out and put Garnet Exelby. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Primo could have made that list, Woo! too. Thomas Caberlet, and uh, I couldn't even remember if he was on the team this season, Jason Blake. Oh, so I had yours? Ian White, Caberlet, Hal Gill, Kubina, and Thomas Eric, just because I had oh, no wow. idea. Hal Gill. I, I, <laughs> he that's was a, an that's a good list, yeah. And he was traded to the Penguins that year and, and won the, won the fucking cup. cup. Yes. Unbelievable. Ah! Damn. All right, all right. Second question. Expressing his feelings. Thank you for this little intro, uh, the great Domsky. Expressing his feelings of being uncomfortable in the environment of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Christopher Stieg requested a trade and was sent to the Philadelphia Flyers in 2011 for a oh, first no. and third round pick in the 2011 draft. Which, yes. relatively speaking, was a pretty good return. It was a really good return. Who came back? 
For Christopher Steve. As in, like, who was drafted with those picks? Who were drafted in the 2011 oh. draft. First round Steve pick. Steve should know this. And third round pick of the Leafs. 2011, first and third round picks that came back for the Christopher Steeg trade. These two guys did have a uh, a cup of tea, a cup of Joe with the Leafs. Oh, mm-hmm. they both played with the Leafs. Yeah, oh, yeah okay. they got some so games I, in there. So well, I know that's one. some help. I'll, I'll tell you how much they played. I'm Steve. Don't point at me. I can't give you any hints. I think I know. Who, I <laughs> think I'm. Uh... Um, hang on. So uh, the uh, the guy who was drafted in the first round with the pick, he played oof, nine games mm-hmm. in fourteen, fifteen, and then three games I'm in pretty fifteen, confident. sixteen. I'm pretty confident. I got it. He okay. was he was twenty fifth overall. Yeah, I'm, uh, okay. I'm almost positive. That's yeah, not good. I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Pretty yeah. Next guy it should be the guy you get third round pick. Played for a while. Okay. Up when Pre- I don't even want to say I'm pretty guess sure. This. Pretty sure I got it. All right, all right. Steven, who are your two guys? My first round pick, Adam, say it with me. Three, two, one. Stuart, Stuart Percy. Percy. Yeah! Correct. Go. Ding, ding, ding. Holy shit. Nice, guys. <laughs> I'm still in this. Yeah, it's, it's still tied. It's still tied. All right, all right. All right, who's by, the by third the way, round pick? I, I went to a game once, and Stuart Percy, I went to the one of the nine games he played in 14-15. <laughs> no it was against the Devils, and my ex-girlfriend, my girlfriend at the time, was like, wow, who is that? He's hot. I'm like, well, that's their young upstart defenseman. We're hoping that he's going to be really good one day. Mm. He, well, and he was a guy who, when Dubas joined the organization, or had already been there a few months, was like, we did not treat him properly. Yeah, we didn't do right oh, by well. him. Yeah. yeah, so he's a great example. <clears throat> uh, yeah, people, people like, laugh at his name. And I'm not saying this, I'm not, maybe I am being biased because he was, we were always cool. Yeah. But uh, I just... That that was an example of a player being developed poorly, and not necessarily the player sucks. And the Leafs were famous for that. Yes. And number three, uh, third round pick, two thousand eleven, came. Uh, they used in the uh, they used to draft from the Chris Versey trade. I'm gonna go with winger selected from the Sudbury Wolves, Josh Levo. Not wild. I was gonna go with Connor Brown, but I think that's too late. No, he was he was, yeah, he was uh, like a sixth or seventh. Josh player. Levo, it is. Ah, yes! Well done, Stephen. There well we done. go. All right, boom, all right. Boom. So I, w- I initially had Victor Louv written down, and then I was like, no, oh. I can't be Victor Louv. So you have three. Adam has three points. Steve has four points. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll move on to our next question. God damn, Carnet X will be is a guy. Two thousand five off season. Oh dear. The Oof. Leafs signed a high profile free agent to a one year contract. Who was it? Well, they signed several. They signed several, so I'm going to write down... You get one guess. So this he's a, was... He's a forward? Yeah. This signed was, a one-year deal. Yeah, I know this. Before the lockout. Or the, like during the lockout, basically. Sure. Yeah. Heading into it. Yes. No, 04, 05. 05 is when the oh, lockout right. yeah, solved. Is, so coming out. Coming, yeah, out. coming sorry, out. Sorry, yes, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, I know exactly who this is. I got it. I got it, too. Steve, reveal. Do you guys want to say it on three? Three? Or one, two, three. Eric, Eric Lindros. Lindros. Well done. Yeah. I also had Jason Allison, I believe, who also signed a one-year deal. <laughs> yes. Uh, one of my favorite things ever. He signed a $1.5 million contract with a $1 million bonus. Mm. Interesting. Uh, what happened? The $1 million bonus was for if he played in 64 games. What happened in game 63? He got in a fight and broke his hand. <laughs> Did he get the bonus? No. All right. Final question. I don't know if that's even true. I just say it all the time. Each correct answer will be a point. <laughs> oh, God. Multiple choice. In 2002, the Leafs made it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Correct. Name the three teams they played on their way to the finals. So the oh. first round, second round, and the finals, who they lost to. Give 2003? 2002. Two. 2002. Give me those, uh, give me those, those three Last teams. year with the Leafs. Uh... I know the third round. That's easy. Who they play in the second? Who they play in the first? Got it. Hang on. I think. Man, that's it's been a long time. It has. Man. It's been a minute. Because uh... like they made it in '99 too, and I don't think I could tell you. Well, it was Philly in the first round in '99. It was, it was Philly, and I remember that series because Philadelphia outscored Toronto in total goals over, over the course of that series, and Toronto still won. 
Because oh, Curtis wow. Joseph stood on his head. And then they lost to Buffalo in the third round because Hashik was just on a fucking heater. Yeah, I remember they lost to Buffalo. And that was the um, year they... Uh, that was the Brett Hull toe in the crease year. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that okay. could have been against the Leafs. Um, imagine that. <laughs> you want to talk about heartbreak. Brett Hall in the crease robbing the Leafs of a cup? Whew. Um, okay, so I'm really struggling here okay. because it's been a long time. Mm-hmm. So give me a second. Stretch, because I got to think here. Talk about uh, something else. Okay. Um... The day uh, Brett Hall scored the toe in the crease goal, okay. I, I was a kid, so I was 11. I had to go to bed. Wasn't allowed to stay up to watch it because it went to overtime, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that was also the day I caught my first fish. <laughs> what? I was. You've I, been fishing? I had never been to a cottage before, <laughs> and my dad um, brought me up to his work buddy's cottage, uh-huh. and I just fished off the dock, and we just caught like, like this big, like little sunfish size of like a burger mm. yeah and i just kept throwing them have back. you been fishing since yeah it's boring <laughs> <laughs> i never catch anything i got it 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 yeah i got it all right all right first round no let's start backwards who'd they lose to in the conference finals 2002 three two one new jersey carolina hurricanes oh the <gasps> fucking idiot oh my god <laughs> Oh my god! Yes. What just happened? Yes. I'm so stupid! Oh my god! The Jeff O'Neill. Fuck off. Yeah, sorry. I'm so sad. <laughs> hey, it ain't over yet. We still got what? two more answers. It was 28 to 3. Atlanta Falcons versus New yeah, England Patriots. <laughs> Steve I told you, Dangle. I'm going to blow it. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, <laughs> right. God. Okay, what man. a moron. <laughs> it's Nick Robertson all over again. That was a 25 point lead, Steve. <laughs> Nick Robertson, noted defender for the New Jersey. Who did Devils. they lose to in the second, or who did they defeat in the second <laughs> round? Ottawa. Ottawa. <laughs> who did they beat in the first round? Islanders. Islanders. Fuck off. It's a tie ball game, we ladies tied. and gentlemen. We got a tie. Oh, we got to go in the bonus round. <laughs> you had me. You had me. What is that? Can I use the washroom? Yes. And then we come back with bonus question. Remember yeah. that Raptors game where that guy threw the ball up in the air to waste time and Mo Pete caught it and then sank the three? Yes. I just threw the ball in the air, and you're Mo Pete. <laughs> and I'm shooting with my left hand. Not what right. a dick. No, I Patrick Steffened it. Yes, yes. And you're uh, whoever scored that goal. Todd Marchand? I think I so. Remember. No, Todd Marchand scored the Game 7 winner. Why do I remember all this shit? But you can't remember the Carolina Hurricanes. I, you know what? When did they lose to the Devils? Uh, every other year. Every was, other fucking like, year? Yeah, and it was always in the second round. There was one third round defeat to the Devils, and I think was it was Was that 99? The, that was... When was the Domi year? Where he elbowed Scott Niemeyer in the That was a second, the and they would have won that. They That that turned the series. That, yeah, and then they had six shots in Game 7. That was, I want to oh. say, 01. But it was a second round. They kept losing to them in the second round. It was round. a crazy I, you series. Because they went to the conference finals twice with Cujo. It was once against Buffalo, once against Carolina. And the reason... I remember that. Is I remember I was a subscriber to the Hockey News. Carolina. And it was like, in, on any other day at that point, the Leafs' payroll at that point was like $70 million, right? Oh, yeah. It was crazy. And they should have beaten Carolina. The problem was, with the exception of Gary Roberts, everybody was injured. Oh, it was, Alan McCauley was their top-line center. Yeah, like, Matt was out. And um, even Roberts think, needed double shoulder surgery after that. Yeah, so it was like they're they're literally everybody was it was attrition. Yeah, and that's why I keep bringing up Pierre Hedin because they they called him up and I was like I don't even know who that is. Exactly. Uh, All right, last question. Sake. I don't know if you guys will get this one. It's a little difficult. It's a bonus round question. It needs to be difficult. Hall of Famer, Ace Bailey. Oh. Asked that his retired leaf number six could be taken out of retirement so that it could be worn by another leaf star. Who was that player? Number six. Do we get a year? Mm. No. Hmm. Mm. Why do you know? <laughs> no. Mm. Uh, no, you don't get a year. Leaf star. Ace Bailey was the one who asked? So that this other player And, and could what wear you need it. to know is Ace Bailey was old as shit when we were born. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, he was a while ago. 
<laughs> buddy would have uh, <laughs> so and no and no disrespect to Ace, but he, he, he we played a long time ago. He was old as shit <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Uh, this gonna... player is also. I'll give you a hint. This player is also all this shit. Oh, thanks. He's, yeah. So, there you go. Leaf Write down your star. guesses, Steve. You had this in the bag, so we shouldn't be asking this yeah, question. Yeah, we shouldn't I'm be here. So we should be on our way home, <laughs> right? Now you're gonna be stuck in traffic, and it's all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> no, I parked up north. I'm good. Fuck. Um. Dude, I don't know. Oh fuck, Adam knows. I don't know if I do. I'm gonna choke. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like this. is really tough. Yeah, it's, and a, it's a hard question. It depends on the year, man. It depends on the year, uh, because it's not been in our lifetime. There's not been a number six of consequence I, I, on the Leafs. So, you know, my instant star. Thought, star, yeah. I don't like the way you said that. Uh, f- fuck, I don't know. I, or just, I'll just write down any old name. Uh, number six is the defense number for sure. You really usually see defensemen wearing that. I. No, wait, w- were they successful in getting it out of yes, retirement? Yes. Yes. Because they didn't really they honor and numbers and they and it's an old as shit time ago. So it's got to be 70s, 80s, mm-hmm. which I don't admittedly know a lot about because it's too painful to go through the history. Um, okay, I'm going to... I'm dying. I'm just dying. Uh, I, I have my answer. I know it's wrong. Adam, do you have an answer? Yeah, I think so. I say... Mm-hmm. Even though I know he wore 21, Boria Salming. Adam, what's your answer? I was going to say Boria too. But then I was like, I know that's not his number. Right. So mm. maybe the story is, and maybe you're right on this one, that, that Boria was like, thank you, but I couldn't I couldn't live up to that or whatever. Because yeah, Boria is a pretty classy dude. And I was thinking, like, what the hell was Lanny McDonald's number? I was wondering that too. So I'm going to say Lanny. You're both incorrect. Oh. Oh. It was Ron Ellis. Oh! oh yeah. Wow. The 60, uh, 69 season is when he started wearing uh, number Damn, six. Nice. Okay. Yeah, Damn. yeah. Well, our older listeners hate us. But you know. All right. I'm going to quickly give you a, uh, a numbers based question. Okay, let's go Closest quick. to it without going over. <sighs> all right. Fuck. I just pulled up the all time points thing. Uh, all right, let's go. Regular season game winning goals. Okay. The record is held by Yarmir Yager. Yeah. What's the number without going over? Closest to. Write it down. Oh. Regular season game winning goals. Yarmir Yager, number one. Write it down. Steve. Without going over? Yes. <laughs> Hold up your numbers. Adams is 69. Steve's is 80. The correct answer is. 135. Oh, wow. Oh, Steve pulls it out in the no, end. No, he doesn't. That should be a tie. Wow. Oh, wow. some way. Well done. <laughs> that should be a tie. Listen. <laughs> Adam, oh, you're I... so close. Uh, it's a tap in on up. 18. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. 5 <laughs> 1, <laughs> regular season standings. Steve's up 5 1. Good times, guys. All right. Good times. We love you. Thank you so much for playing. Carolina. Nick Robertson. Ron Allen. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.